What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Views from a High Ground, uh, episode five. Well, I always say that. Now it's confusing because this is episode four of Views from the High Ground, but we're covering episode five, part five of Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, and we're doing. We should so... just say episode five. Sure, whatever. To keep from confusing everyone. It's too late. I've done that. <laughs> uh, we are we are reporting to you live from Tatooine. Uh, we got we got home yesterday at like 1230 at night uh, to find that our air conditioner had frozen over. Mm. Uh, so our upstairs where our offices are, are in the 90 degrees. It was 91 degrees last night when we got home. It's hot. I think it got down to 89 today. So small victories. The hashtag for this stream is hashtag hot and ready. Um, <laughs> so Little Caesars, if you want to sponsor yeah. us, go for it. Little Caesars. I don't really want any hot pizza right now. No. If you could give us a cold pizza. We are hot and ready. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and our guest is hot and ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's why we we have the change of scenery. We're downstairs where it's slightly cooler. We have three fans uh, blowing on us right now. Four oh, fans. four fans. Five fans. Five fans. I'm not good at the... Yeah, I gave you my little broken one. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get better at that as the night goes on. Uh, we've got beer we've got rosé we're ready to to try to keep as cool as possible by and, dehydrating it yeah dehydrating ourselves. and jay bell is absolutely right uh it is 97 degrees in atlanta we just came from orlando and it's cooler in orlando than it is in atlanta right now really yeah so that's absurd <laughs> it followed us yeah the heat followed yeah us. we're just in the middle of a heat wave and it's the best time to have your air conditioner uh crap out on you but that that's enough of that let's bring our guest in uh, this is our good friend, Ken Plume. You may recognize him from Explain It To Me last year. Uh, we did several <laughs> episodes with Ken, and we're going to bring it back. We're, we're going to do it again it's when Lord of the Rings comes way. out. But <laughs> uh, I keep hearing that. I'm glad I could be here for the summer fun episode. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that was a good idea you had uh, right before we went live is to go get a bunch of beach toys and stuff. Uh, <laughs> if we had thought about it, we might have like an inflatable Death Star beach ball somewhere. I had that uh, Vader inner tube, which would have been perfect for this because he's even got like a little <laughs> blow up lightsaber. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that survived our last beach trip, though. I don't think it did. Actually, well, if the AC, left it at Airbnb. if the AC isn't fixed before the Lego stream, then you'll have to redecorate. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're, we're having someone come by tomorrow morning, so hopefully they're able to get us settled. And, and then, of course, it has to cool off uh, by a good... 20 degrees before uh we do the lego stream but i think we just set up crossed. a hot spot and stream from the pool build legos in the pool yeah yeah our neighborhood pool uh -huh. we don't have a pool <laughs> <laughs> is it is it weird that i hear an ice cream truck in the background right now is that on my do side you really? or your side yes i don't hear that it's <laughs> like they know I mean, you, you that you're in help. need <laughs> they heard they heard us. yeah <laughs> so we'll we'll see how quickly this episode devolves uh i i see JC, thank you for the super chat. And we got one from Jay Bell as well. All the Jays are chiming in already. Uh, we're going to chat with Ken. We're going to have a bit of a chat with Ken Plume here <laughs> for, uh, thank you for the plug. A, a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, check out Ken Plume's podcast, a bit of a chat. We've been on it twice, I think. Um, but we're going to talk about today's episode for a little while, and then we're going to dive into chat questions. So, uh, Ken, first, let me just ask, how have you been enjoying Kenobi so far? I've been enjoying it quite a bit i think i've finally gotten over so there's i had to come to terms with something i think i've been wrestling with with all of these disney plus shows which is the maybes when you're just going well maybe so and so will show up and maybe this will happen or maybe that'll happen and just letting those maybes fade away and go okay let's just see what they do and then we can talk about after the fact, oh, it would have been nice if so-and-so showed up or this had happened. So just for my own well-being, <laughs> my own sort of enjoyment of the shows, it's coming to terms with not overthinking that too much. Because I've seen, you know, particularly as the discourse has evolved and devolved around Kenobi in particular, when it comes to people being disappointed two episodes in by what they hadn't seen from a six-episode show, the rest of which they hadn't seen yet. Uh, so I've been enjoying it is basically what I, what that boils down to, uh, more so than, than I even expected that I would. And I had pretty high expectations for it. 
I, yeah. I certainly relate to that. I mean, there are things that I've been hoping to see that I'm like, okay, there's one episode left and fingers crossed. Uh, but if Dexter if don't do is it, it, Dexter. Yeah, Dexter Jester, where is he? Elon <laughs> sees Bagano. Bring them with back. Dexter okay. together. Yeah, they yeah, yeah at their club. <laughs> Uh, no, I think I let go of my Elon Sleeves Pagano hope a while back. That was oh. my like my wild guess. But you can keep it in the back of your mind somewhere. Yeah, it'll live there. What could have been? <laughs> that, <laughs> that kind of is is the case, isn't it, with Star Wars, especially with any content happening around times in the timeline where we know what's happening before and after. So unless it's like brand new content way down in the future, we have this huge timeline to think about and we ha have all these characters in our minds that we can, you know, kind of pick and choose from and say, oh, yeah, they would fit or they would fit. So I definitely do that, too. I'm, I'm guilty of doing that as well. Yeah. And I try to not do that. I try to be very reserved in my predictions and stuff. But still, the second they go to Fortress Inquisitorious, I'm like, Cal? Where's Cal? Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's binoculars hard. out, like looking for Cal. Uh -huh, he's there somewhere. <laughs> no respect like for Cal. Didn't even get a mention. <laughs> yeah. After everything he did. <laughs> yeah. They, they've never even heard of Cal. No one's broken into Fortress Inquisitorious before. No one talks about the second sister. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Where, where are all these people? Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good segue to talk about. I, I think uh reva had a lot of cool stuff this. in this episode okay <laughs> uh, I, I really liked uh finally getting to see her full story uh, molly how did you feel about uh, now that you're trying to do something on the laptop i'm going to throw the question to you yeah how uh, did you feel about reva's revelations rev revelations, revelations. there we go <laughs> we got Ooh. there uh i i loved it i you know, I I wasn't disappointed at all when it was basically nearly exactly what we had been thinking it was going to be this whole time. Like, I didn't want to be surprised by it, anything too big from her character in this point in the in the show. And I'm glad that we got all of this stuff in the penultimate episode instead of them waiting until the last episode to reveal all this stuff for Reva. Because now we get a better idea of where her head is at going into the finale you know we don't know where she's going or or what her plans are but she's already had her confrontation with vader and kind of obi-wan and so I, i'm just glad that they went ahead and got over that hill of like here's here's her backstory here's how she knows vader is anakin you know why she's mad at uh, Obi-Wan why she's why she's mad in general not just <laughs> yeah. she doesn't have like a specific reason why she's mad at Obi-Wan other than the fact that Anakin was his Padawan she's just mad in general I, I think you just made a good point that I hadn't really thought about and something that I said today to you uh was that that and in, in my review that I was like this is the episode that kind of made me wish this stuck to being a movie because they set up all these questions and then uh, down the line, they answered them all, which is great. Um, but I was like, after having weeks and weeks to talk about these questions, they were all what we thought they would be, mm -hmm. uh, which is fine. But you're right. You're, I'm glad they did it in episode five and not episode six, because now I'm like, yeah, what's going to happen in episode six? And hopefully I'm. I was hoping this episode would be longer too, but hopefully the last episode is nice and long uh, and can just be a really wild ride. But now Reva's alone again. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. she doesn't have the Jedi. She doesn't have the Inquisitors. She's just a free lone agent to do. I mean, now she's in a position to really make whatever her own choices are going to be in this matter. Yeah. So, okay, Ken, what do you think she is going to do? Because the last tease, I mean, she got stabbed obviously she's fine everyone gets stabbed in star wars and it's <laughs> well she got stabbed as a youngling so basically she, um, my understanding from that flashback is that she just played dead and it was just her will that kept her alive in right. that point so who long, knows how long she spent sort of because they said they found her in the gutter how long she was hiding after surviving that before mm -hmm. the inquisitors finally found her and brought her in to that fold yeah 
I'm I'm curious. She might have seen Obi Wan's message as well, telling all the Jedi keep away. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's what I thought. I'm curious if she yeah escaped the Jedi Temple at some point, or if she stayed there and was. Would have been really awkward. She looked over just to watch Obi Wan and Yoda walking by and then walking back (laughs) out. But I don't know. I, I guess I get the sense that she probably volunteered to become an Inquisitor. Um. Yeah, I, I, it is a curious thing how she became an Inquisitor and if they knew she was a Jedi or not. I get the sense that Vader calling her youngling meant that he knew who she was. And All along it. or knew in that moment? I don't know. It certainly seems like they set her up with the whole Grand Inquisitor feint. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if it was all along. I mean, uh, he said, you're no longer of any use. Uh, the Grand Inquisitor said your rage was useful. Now it's tiresome. So maybe they knew and we're just using her. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's a good question. What do you think? I I don't know. I think her story is more about just how trauma like a lot of stories in this is about how trauma affects people and for her like a lot of people were like why did vader keep her alive like why didn't he make sure she was dead and it's kind of like he's not really in the business of killing people as much as he is in the business of hurting people and especially now (laughs) yeah he wanted to hurt her and also like a palpatine long game like, isn't that the sort of games he learned from Palpatine by yeah. this point of, yeah, yeah, for, yeah you, you have a use. Be angry. I like your right. anger. Right. And like, I think maybe Vader's thinking now that her secret is out, now that she's encountered Obi-Wan and seen that he kind of set her up for failure with Vader, Vader's like, I'm going to hurt you and just give you the chance to come crawling back to me and use that anger now that she knows obi-wan isn't going to help her specifically she she, you know vader wants to keep his options open as far as uh how much help that he can get and he might think that she could be valuable after the fact yeah and And he's had to do these lousy loyalty tests all the time with palpatine yeah Yeah. exactly (laughs) yeah palpatine like uh a couple like the second after uh, he made Vader and he was constructed. He, Palpatine zapping him with force lightning and making him go on a Jedi hunt and he gets torn apart. He just, and he, yeah, he does it constantly. Like, uh, weird game. I'm going to test you. don't get to use the force in this test. I and still, you have to count backwards the whole time. <laughs> I do, th- I don't know. I got the sense in the episode that they were leaving her to die. But the Grand Inquisitor does say, we're leaving you in the gutter. So it, it is kind of like, we're going to leave you in the exact same state we found you in, injured and uh, near death and alone. We'll see what you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They uh, know they know that she could come crawling back to them and then she would have a lot more to prove. So it's it's just how they keep their foot soldiers, the <laughs> Empire. <laughs> under that also sets up yeah. the weirdness for where this goes next because obviously she knows about Tatooine now and about going back to Tatooine. So I can see no matter what her plan is, she it's going to involve her going back to Tatooine to find this child that obviously Obi-Wan is concerned with. Mm -hmm. So is that going to be where it's going to be weird if it leads to Vader going back to Tatooine at this point? I don't, that's the point I don't want to see. like grand inquisitor. Fine. If he shows up and that's like her final, showdown or confrontation or sacrifice is to deal with him or delay him or uh you know confuse him and get him off the trail i I wanted to bring up the yeah i forgot there's a back to tank on jabeem they showed (laughs) it again in this episode so that's a good reminder Uh, anytime they need someone to heal quickly there's some sort of back like transportable back to uh, emergency shot that you can use probably yeah and that's where I wanted to head, Ken. Do you think Riva is about to go to Tatooine? And will she? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I don't want Vader to get there. I also don't want Riva or anyone. Like, I kind of am getting a redemption sense 
from Riva that that's the direction she's headed. Mm -hmm. I don't want her to learn who Leia and Luke really are. And then Obi-Wan just be like, I trust you. And that's also yeah. a bit a repeat of what we saw with Maul and Obi-Wan in their final confrontation. Like that would seem like a real repeat of that whole confidence conversation at the end. Except he was dying. Reva. We don't know what's going to happen think, with Reva. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of am thinking that she survives this, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what if we can... actually see her in Jedi Survivor? Yeah. If this is setting up her, then you get your Cal, then you get your Reva, then you get uh, further further uh, use of the title Jedi Survivor, deeper meaning of what Survivor means in it. Yeah. I just, I would hate if the character was disposable. Like, like if that's the new big thing for these big Obi-Wan bads, is mm -hmm. that, yeah, they're all going to die. This is all going to happen. They're going to have this weird redemptive moment at the end. And not to mention, yeah, that would be so similar to the second sister. Right. Of coming coming back right at the last second. I mean, it, that's so similar of so many Star Wars villains. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I kind of would see, prefer to see more like an Asajj path to where it's not a complete redemption, but it is turning away from that dark side and just sort of, well, now I got to find out who I am as an adult. Because there's also that sort of journey of these characters is who you choose to be as an adult. So that's why I found, you know, we'll get to it when we talk about the whole flashback stuff mm -hmm. uh, about what the importance of that was. And I think it's sort of finding your identity and if you choose to evolve. So yeah, I think that we, we would be a talk about that now. Okay, sure. <laughs> how do you want to talk about it? <laughs> I mean, you, you brought up exactly how I feel about it and, and is basically what the, the video I'm writing says is that you can see, uh, that Vader, that Anakin Vader, whoever you want to call him, hasn't changed. Like Obi-Wan is able to look back at who Vader was at that point in time. And he's like, I know what he's going to do. And Anakin, I think, is maybe looking back at the same encounter and saying the same stuff. But he's wrong because Obi-Wan has changed some. But it's very much like the Maul Obi-Wan encounter in Twin Sons, where Maul is the same. He has not grown past his rage and his hatred for Obi-Wan, so he's able to goad him into attacking him as if he were Qui-Gon. Right. When in so, reality, Obi-Wan has changed greatly. Mm -hmm. So Vader uses that flashback, or uh, as I want to call it, his tunnel vision, mm -hmm. uh, to basically, he's looking just for a weakness. His whole point in that is to look for a weakness. I like that the contrast of Obi-Wan was to look going back on that to learn something mm -hmm. from it and mm -hmm. to evolve and apply that learning to the current situation. Showing the contrast of, you know, that lack of evolution that you see in all of the dark side characters. They sort of freeze in their moment of their, their anger. Yeah, I mean, can't Vader, shake wouldn't, Vader wouldn't be Vader if he had the ability to evolve and move on and move past his anger you know that's kind of what fuels him in the dark side and what keeps him uh with palpatine mm -hmm. so he it's like obi-wan said he doesn't have the patience for siege he's going to attack and yeah the way we see anakin fighting in those flashbacks and molly pointed out that it's so much like luke in that one moment where he's, he's just, just like going hammering down. Yeah. i'd be and curious if that was an exact too. recreation of the same sort of blows because it looked very similar to it those did. same sort of luke blows and that'd be a nice mm -hmm. parallel to oh yeah when you let anger overtake this is what it looks yeah. like and i mean we saw vader do that in episode three as well yeah. just like wailing and it's like, that's just Vader's brute force. I'm going to break through no matter what, and eventually you'll crack. Yeah. And there was a part, there was a point too in one of the flashbacks where Anakin was like swinging the lightsaber and then it cut back to the present time. Uh, and it kind of gave me the same vibes as the, the cut when he's attacking the Tusken Raiders, where he like, it cuts on the swing. Mm. So he's just like, seeing red in that moment 
I don't know. I, I don't know that he's feeling rage against Obi Wan well, in that he, way, but he, it's like a similar. He's blinded by his. He, well, his he wants to win. Desire. His desire. Yeah. 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 He's blinded by his desires. Yes. Um. Yeah, I, I think that's about everything I wanted to. We can we can do our pictures oh, that yeah. we all drew. <laughs> I want to. Ken, you said you were uh, excited to share yours, so let's... I spent I spent far too much time on mine. So yeah, I wanted I to have no time on mine. I wanted to capture the moment of tunnel vision. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, we all drew very similar things, <laughs> but 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 mine has an added element because I went interactive with mine. I actually <laughs> <laughs> wanted to. There we go. There's Aww. his tunnel vision. Oh, oh, there we go. Did you have a magnet on that? I did. I attached a magnet. <laughs> I made it fully interactive. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I can't believe we all drew some something so similar. Like different scenes, but it's funny the way this worked out. Yours is yours is pretty different. Well, mine is pretty similar. Well, I want to Ken, what about that scene uh made you want to draw that? I I like that just as it, summing up that reflective lack of reflection of Vader and uh, and then wanting to plus it with clearly what he was focused on that whole time and what made him so upset in that moment is that, you know, I think ultimately Obi-Wan is right, you know, and there is still good. He still has feelings. He's in the, you know, the anger persists because he still cares. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to bring up that I almost forgot is that's kind of the one thing I hope we see in episode six, and I don't know if there's enough time to do it. A solid but, hug? Yeah, or, or an <laughs> attempt at one. Just the, the idea, and we've been talking about this for five, four weeks now, that uh, Obi-Wan once thought as you do from Return of the Jedi, that line, that Obi-Wan once thought that there was good in me and he was wrong. That's what Vader tells Luke. But we haven't ever seen that. Mm -hmm. So I am hoping that somehow we see that, but... I don't know if there's enough time to close that out unless it's an hour and a half long episode, <laughs> which would be great. I, I'm sh I have faith that they'll figure something out to, to convey that. I thought it was interesting uh, when Reva is talking to Obi-Wan through the door and she says, like, do you really want Anakin dead? And he kind of like sits there and, and thinks about it. And I thought maybe in that moment, in his mind, that might have been the moment where he was like, all right, Anakin is dead. Vader has taken his place. And I was like, maybe in that moment, he was like, all right, from now on, I'll make up this lie to tell Luke eventually when he's ready that his his father is dead. And I wonder they if they were completely different people. I wonder if uh, Vader kind of sparing Reva, Reva will make Obi-Wan think that there's hope or something like that. How many times has Obi-Wan at this point in canon seen sort of a dark side come back? Like where does the, the Quinlan Voss novel fall into? Like, is, was that resolved in time for him to have found out? Obviously that Quinlan went to I the dark so, yeah. side and came back. So that is, you know, not know you know, knowing that there wasn't a lot of Sith, hanging around prior to that would that have been his main experience of oh you can come back from this you yeah. can go away from those feelings you can there is redemption of some sort and i think not just quinlan but asajj he would have heard about i'm, I'm trying to remember how dark disciple ends because i feel like there was a scene where he heard about what asajj did and he was like wow <laughs> <laughs> like after all that someone got through to her mm -hmm. uh but it's been years since I've read that book. But yeah, I, I think that he knows. And even if he didn't, because th the way these live action shows go, they often need to kind of repeat some story beats for the live action only audience. And I'm kind of Re Reva is a very similar character to Anakin. Um, like she is going after what she wants, which is revenge against Vader, uh, which is kind of arguably a, a noble-ish cause, but she's obviously gone way too far. She is willing to do things that Anakin did, 
when he failed to achieve her goal. Um, then she is stabbed and left for dead, just like Anakin was. Injury is not as bad as Anakin's, but mm -hmm. I, I think that maybe there are some parallels between Reva and Anakin that Obi-Wan could see that and go, if, if she comes back, then he could be like, maybe there is hope for Vader. Yeah, it kind of shows, too, that, like, because I was thinking about the similarities between Reva and, and Anakin, but it, and they made it a point to ha have Obi-Wan say that, like, this is why you're still a Padawan. You can't see past some of this stuff. And it's really sad on Reva's part because she had no choice. Her path as a Jedi was stopped uh, in its tracks because of Order 66. So, like, it just shows you what can happen to someone who is force sensitive but gets turned down the wrong path too early and then that's all they know for the rest of their life <laughs> i, I want to make sure i said reva is not being noble in her pursuit of revenge i think that in her mind the goal of killing vader is a good one but so it's a self it's a selfish goal yeah is ultimately I mean Obi-Wan calls it hunting. Yeah. It's like you're not serving him, you're hunting him. She's absolutely not a like good person in the way she's a dark side character. She is, yeah, willing to torture Leia. She is willing to uh kill force she's willing to do her own order sixty six mm -hmm. to get to Vader. That's not noble. But I think in her mind, she's like, I have good intentions. So if she had accomplished that, if she had killed Vader, what do you think then? would have been her path like what is you know there's that's sort of that thing where okay well what do you want now I, what, I think she who would, are you i think she would take his place she would probably i mean that's kind of the pitfall of all the dark siders is you're constantly trying to climb that corporate dark side multi-level marketing ladder yeah uh and so then she would probably become uh palpatine's apprentice and she might still have that like oh and now i will kill him and then i can rule the way i want i mean that's kind of how they all <laughs> that's really go. interesting to think about because yeah i mean no one would have been there to see it happen so i wonder what the grand inquisitor would have <laughs> thought like if if vader was dead and she was there and he was like i'm sorry what i'm imagining his very like <laughs> confident sassy walk in the way he did where he's like hello third sister but he like, he walks in and vader's like headless on the floor like <laughs> as, as he just does that Whoa. little that slow turn and walks back yeah. out yeah. one motion. Yeah. that simpsons gift yeah. just, like, come in no i'll go right back out. I, I imagine puts the cap back on <laughs> reva would have been like neil you see what i did neil uh -huh. yeah. to me like that it, the power would have probably got into her head pretty quickly yeah i think so this is real bull crap second sister or third sister <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think they don't seem like they have backup plans beyond a certain point in any of this yeah no nah, they they have i they... agree uh with brad here dark siders can't see beyond yeah. their own rage they don't really have a plan Although Maybe Palpatine should... has a lot of plans. Yeah, sure. He's an, the exception. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll go back to school. Maybe she'll <laughs> become a teacher, get her own apprentice. Go to, go to DeVry University. I'll, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about that next week after we see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go too far down into the maybes. <laughs> <laughs> see? See? It's a, yep, it's yep. a very dark path. Do uh, you want to do your picture? Sure, I'll do first, my picture. Or? Because it's not really, mine's more of a joke than anything. Uh, but when this happened, I just went, oh, m damn it. Like, <laughs> all of, oh, the, I forgot what the camera is. Uh, Obi-Wan walks in front of that wall, and there was Arabesh everywhere. And I was just like, I'm going to have to translate all that. <laughs> and I'm upset. Uh, if you so... watch our, our reaction on Patreon, he literally <laughs> is like, oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> what so, if it just uh, says, gotcha, Alex? Well, what I wrote is LOL, good luck, nerd. So that's. Oh, you wrote that out at <laughs> our bench. <Yeah. laughs> I thought about writing like Plo Koon lives, uh, signed DF. I like did that you, you, to... you added extra work to your joke, much like I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you look to see if anyone had, like on Reddit or anywhere, like translated I'm, any of that? I'm sure someone has. Or are you going to do the work for yourself? Well, usually when I find them on Reddit, which someone did in, the, in episode three, 
but there were still some things left untranslated. So sure. I'm still going to have to go through. But the people who do that, thank you so much. It's such a huge help. It's yeah. just Yarl was here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive as far as we know. <laughs> I'm still waiting to see the, that, like, I still don't know what it's called. The middle school S scribed <laughs> yeah. into the wall somewhere. Uh, it should. That would be hysterical. What, I should have. I should have done that. What a there. cool Easter egg that would be <laughs> in Star Wars. <laughs> and I can't Molly wait to see Molly's. Uh, I did mine real quickly, and my, the spaceship in this looks terrible. Um, but I went with Vader pulling the ship down. It's kind of like a obvious like power move for Vader. But it was a moment in the show that kind of kind of caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting something that big to happen. Uh, and I said it before, uh, just anytime Vader does anything big with the Force, I'm always pretty excited about it because we don't see a lot of that stuff. Like I, I like that they're using him kind of sparingly. Honestly, I, I liked the, the pull down. But in my head, I was like, OK, like we've seen this before in video games and stuff. When he started just ripping the ship open. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, this is sick. <laughs> I was like, they are in so much trouble. And then the moment when you realize that was a diversion and the other transport takes off, you're like, oh. and you can just see the fumes. <laughs> the steam coming the out steam. of his helmet. Yeah. The flames on the side of his face. Flames. Hurting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like I, that that's... that that moment it was was a little bit of a slight eye roll from me it was like oh there was a where was the second ship the whole time then see, i, I like it because go, it was very very light in the background you could see through see, the i haze. like that cuz to me it's like we all have that vader tunnel vision like you can see it the whole time but you know he's after the one that he thinks is escaping which god i hope that was remote who's piloted yeah who's yeah. piloting that i hope they didn't like draw straws and <laughs> one poor soul had to be the dude <laughs> i thought this was over oh is it kamel's character is it <laughs> is it haja i hope not i love haja yeah <laughs> though i really yeah, that... got the short end of the stick on this one <laughs> <laughs> that scene just was i don't know if that was my favorite scene but it was the one that kind of just sticks out in my mind in a lot of other people's minds i know a lot of people got really excited when they saw that i'm not actually one that gets super excited anytime vader's on screen or you know a dark side character is doing something bad you know like <laughs> you're it's, not it's very Miss i love dark ray well yeah <laughs> like i don't know it's just like such a obvious kind of like pompous use of his power i'm just gonna pull the ship out of the sky <laughs> and everybody's like oh my god so cool and i'm like vader's not a cool guy he's a bad guy he does bad things it's still cool <laughs> it's, yeah it's it's a double-edged lightsaber i guess <laughs> but he's also I mean, great at comic double takes <laughs> like there's so many great comic double takes throughout the franchise of him just going really this yeah. happened oh come yeah. on that's he is great in Empire Strikes Back when the Falcon goes away and he like oh looks up. that is the best comedy moment I will put money down back up yeah in the entire franchise <laughs> as far as a comic double take from Vader in that moment mm -hmm. <laughs> perfect comedy yeah, timing I do feel like that's one of the the things about Star Wars is that the bad guys always look so cool <laughs> well but, they get idolized by a lot of people yeah. which is yeah agreed. He is kind of the most recognizable character in Star Wars, I think, across the globe. But I don't know. I think sometimes people idolize him for the wrong reasons. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that George Lucas has talked about that before. And it just that it, it's a it's a power fantasy. It is yeah. the idolization of power for power's sake. That's why there's like a. a an asterisk on me saying that this is my favorite part of the episode because like it was cool but i like character development cool. better yeah <laughs> i mean i think the purge troopers look awesome yeah oh, i don't want to i don't want to be a jedi hunter <laughs> yeah i still think they were kind of wasted in this series they didn't yeah. actually get to use their weapons <laughs> i was they like, didn't actually get to purge why didn't they the didn't purge get, troopers get the purge they were like the last three purge troopers 
in the galaxy. And they're like, oh my God, a Jedi came to Fortress Inquisitorious? Let's go. No, oh, we're dead. <laughs> they, remember they remember well. that one that came that one day and got Larry? <laughs> <laughs> this is our time. <laughs> we're gonna, for Larry. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely felt like the Death Troopers in Star Wars Rebels, where yeah. they, they were around and it was cool, but they didn't do anything different from a normal stormtrooper. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Yeah. Maybe, oh. maybe. I mean, we got one more episode, so <laughs> we'll see. I, I think the time for the Purge Troopers to shine is past. They'll, they'll be back in uh, Survivor, Jedi, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And they will have a musical number. It's going to be <laughs> magnificent. That's their new weapon. Instead of a new, like, electro uh, weapon. Their weapon is dance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so captivated. I would love to see the Imperial Guard fight mm. in live action. Oh, I thought you were going to say like Talent Knight. Oh, yeah. What's their talent, you think? The Imperial Guards? Yeah. Uh, competitive hot dog eating. Hot dog eating? Yeah. yeah. They, they just they, shove it into their helmet. They don't need to turn their heads for that, yeah. so that's good. <laughs> You, you kind of just made me think of something, though. One episode left. Let's take bets. Is Emperor Palpatine going to be in this series? Yes. I think so. I do, we're, too. We're coming to the end of this. I, I still don't know, like you guys said, if, if Vader is going to end up on Tatooine. That feels weird. Maybe they'll fight on the ship. Had Obi-Wan ever been on the, uh, the ship before? A Star Destroyer? Yeah. Uh, not that I know of. I mean, I didn't know that he had ever left Tatooine until four weeks ago. So. Sure, yeah. <laughs> he didn't know where the tractor beam thing was to turn off. He left in Legends <laughs> once or twice, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, I, there's... But they're based of... on the the sort of Republic cruisers, right? So he would sure. have had a general sense of True, how those yeah. things would have operated. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where their last fight is going to be. Uh, so... Palpatine's def definitely, there's going to be a disappointed call where he just goes, I heard you had Obi-Wan. What happened? Mm -hmm. Of course, he's Seth MacFarlane from Robot Chicken, in my mind, always, <laughs> as Palpatine. Honestly, yeah. I think that's going to be a, that could be a really cool thematic mirror at the end. Because, come on, Qui-Gon Jinn's going to be in this. So, Obi-Wan can get kind of that comforting call from his master then they talk and then we see vader talking to his master and how well, terrible it is that goes into a moment i pulled out uh on a tiktok that i thought was fascinating and looking at jedi when luke is trying to have the same conversation about him about you know i think there's still good in you and vader very specifically says you don't know the power of the dark side and the emperor that I think that there is very much probably going to be a punishment that's meted out mm -hmm. on Vader at the end of this to, to squash any of those lingering feelings that Obi-Wan might have, you know, in the, in Palpatine's eyes, polluted Vader with this sense of, Oh, you can get out of this. You can turn away. Yeah. It'd be nice I to actually see that on screen. And yeah. as you said, as a parallel to you know, the touchy feely Qui-Gon call that's going to come through. And and like you said, that that's happened a lot in the comics. <laughs> of Vader will do something, and Palpatine won't like it, and he'll give him a good zap, and uh, and yeah, he gets punished all the time because we've seen being tested. So yeah, it, it would be how Vader has dealt cool with the Inquisitors. The you know, like that choke moment with Reva when she comes in, and that sort of you know HR moment. Uh, it'd be nice to see mirrored. You, you think Vader is this badass who does all these things? Well, here's how Palpatine treats him. So this is mm -hmm. why he is still underfoot to Palpatine. Sort of like when, you know, Palpatine showed up to school <laughs> Darth Maul in Clone Wars. Yeah. And like, well, you know what? Actually, I'm the most powerful here. Just need to remind you of that. Mm -hmm. So I to think see you're that right. mirrored. I think that's a great thing to show. And it kind of... Uh, I don't know, combats what you were talking about, like the the glorification of Vader and his power, mm -hmm. and then to show that there's always a bigger fish, and that's how we're gonna get there. We're gonna cut from <laughs> Qui Gon's gonna appear to Obi Wan, and he'll be like Master Qui Gon, and he'll be like, it, "There's always a bigger fish," and they'll laugh, and, and then, then he'll leave. The, like, yeah. I also bought the... playing cards. Let's have some <laughs> game of Sabic. 
Uh, but yeah, I think that to reinforce the that it's you know the power dynamic and the abusive relationship mm -hmm. ultimately that is Palpatine and Anakin, and you have again, like you said, that contrast of of uh, master and Padawan or master and learner, and I like that this episode also preserved in flashing back to Obi Wan having that training session preserving the line in new hope about yep. him still being the learner vader still being the learner until that moment and then vader trying to like no no i'm a master now i'm better than you now remember that last time it's not going to happen again yeah i i agree that we got to see that training session we got to see that vader hasn't evolved yet so he could still consider himself a learner like it's it's kind of one of those like if you squint it works but I, I do think it works. <laughs> but I'm going to temper all that by saying if Palpatine doesn't show up, I'm fine. I'm fine if Palpatine Same. doesn't show up. Same. Yeah. If we don't get any more cameos, I'll be okay. I do think Qui-Gon should show up just because they name dropped him twice. <laughs> okay. I kind of, like, I will, I will be disappointed if we don't get Qui-Gon. Yeah. Obi-Wan is basically like trying to get in touch with him and he keeps sending him to force voicemail essentially like that that would feel <laughs> really open-ended if we never got any closure from that i don't know agreed um do we what have you think about the flashbacks oh. just in general what do you think about the look of the flashback you had mentioned in your review oh. something about being with some of the effects being slightly disappointed in the honestly the flashbacks uh was not what i was thinking of uh, they they could have done some de aging, sure. Um, that's definitely not an eighteen or nineteen year old Padawan. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Like, maybe he just got back from vacation uh, on a desert planet or something. Maybe the AC right. was out at the Jedi Temple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> yeah, that that stuff didn't bug me. I remember it opened on Coruscant, and I was like, oh wow, we're back at Coruscant. And mm -hmm. then as it pulled back and seeing that little, like the, the braid. braid. The, I the like little that they flash back to the worst hairstyles for both of them. Yeah. It's like, remember, <laughs> in, remember Attack of the Clones? This is all Attack of the Clones. You're, mm -hmm. We're going to bring you back to that period until you love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's got, I was, you know, hoping to see like a conversation on the battlefield and they'd be in their clone armor or something. But, you know, like this, it worked. I'm glad they did But didn't that doesn't do... go back to the learning Exactly. Experience, which is really what this seems to be the crux of this. Totally show. agree. Mm -hmm. And also Obi-Wan like, you know, learning that, that to be Obi-Wan again. Maybe's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, learning how how he taught Anakin and how his student was. But I like, yeah, I just wanted to see clone armor. So. I like that we got uh, like kind of cheery, funny Obi-Wan back for a second. Mm -hmm. Like for some reason, episode two, Obi-Wan makes me think of Santa Claus. He's got like rosy cheeks, a little twinkle in his eye. He's got like a weird mullet with which Santa kind of has sometimes. But he he just had that rapport. We were transported right back to the prequels with the two of them together. And I that was my favorite part of the flashbacks. Anakin did look older than he should have. It it didn't bug me that much. Um, but for the, the visuals, the visual effects and like the production value of everything, I, I told you this earlier, everything is flat. So it just, mm -hmm. the volume is very, very apparent in like every scene. It looks like a stage because everyone is just standing on a very flat surface. Yeah. It's like all the kind of the same color. So there was a lot of times when I was like, all right, they're all just standing in a room together. Like specifically, the when Reva comes with all the stormtroopers to blast that door open, it looked almost identical to the the Rise of the Resistance ride. When you walk into that room and there's just like a bunch of stormtroopers standing there, kind of gave me that feeling. So there was some of that stuff where I was like, this feels kind of like a theme park ride or a play or something, like and that, a, a that, high production play. Yeah, still. and that was where I most. Rec I don't know those Jabim scenes of Riva outside the door. I was just like, my brain was just screaming volume, volume, volume. And I'm like, I can't not see it. So that kind of took me out. And even though I liked 
all the stuff that Vader did with the ship, the way it took off was just like so fast mm -hmm. for what it was. It felt a little unnatural to me. Just it's like little nitpicky things same like as that. The, same as the air speeders, like yeah. the way they kind of came in in the last episode to that hangar. It just looked off a little bit, like a little unfinished. And here's where I am just being a little bit of a hypocrite because I feel like I did not notice anything wrong with the air speeders last week. I seem to be in the minority of people that really liked last week's episode. Uh, I was just kind of having so much fun with all the Fallen Order stuff. Um, so I don't know. The, I I didn't notice anything wrong with the air speeders. And then this week, I was just like so into the story, but little visual things kept kind of like knocking me out of it. And I was like, I got to watch this again. <laughs> I mean, I almost wish that I didn't know about the volume that it, it yeah. was a thing that existed because then i think we wouldn't be looking for those seams we wouldn't uh -huh. be looking for the blends we wouldn't be looking for well that's weird that those set pieces sort of end there and then we get a little bit of distance for some stuff or why they're not interacting with that or why they're mm -hmm. all why they're all huddled around doing our town what? it was kind of like a lot of shaky camera movements too because i i noticed a lot of the camera uh shots looked handheld and then you pointed out that maybe that was to hide the volume because it's not as noticeable in the handheld the camera's shots. moving actually yeah. i was also wondering though if it it could be almost a, a a demo for the volume because the way it works is that it it tracks with the camera so maybe they were like really shake that camera and see if it holds up i don't know i don't like it <laughs> it, it, it is very shaky did, i mean i i will say just so everyone knows, I love this series so far, and every all of my little complaints are very minor, and it it does not take me out of it whatsoever. It's just like people want to know, like, what don't you like? Um, oh yeah, we're we're definitely in nitpick territory now. Where yeah. I was just like, yeah, none of this affects yeah, yeah. how <laughs> I felt about the episode. This is just no. yeah. I mean, I kind of wish the volume would be used for uh, crowd replication. Like you could have mm -hmm. in that background that stretches out into infinity, you can actually have populate that. If you can't afford onset actors for space reasons or for budgetary reasons, build out like, you know, make uh, uh, Mos Espa a super crowded city because everything we see in the volume projection is peopled with digital pe folks, you know, fill out the cast that way. Like if you're going to do a scene of Reva attacking, fill out all the stormtroopers with you know a few dozen more lined up mm -hmm. or pieces of equipment yeah. that are ready to go that are part of the volume not physical physical builds but just makes it feel like a bigger world because that's i think the volume just feels empty in that way like they're beautiful scenes but it seems like you're plopped down into a place where nobody is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and right. uh, sometimes it works great. I don't know. There was something about it this episode where I was just like, I can tell that background is not real, obviously. But there it, there was something that kept drawing my eye to it. Uh, but there have been some scenes in The Mandalorian where I've just been like, I can't believe that wasn't a set. But right. So I don't know. We I mean, were there horrible people for time. criticizing a magical process. Yeah. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. Nice production and made shows like this as a TV show possible. Yeah. And that's the, I can I, talk I about there being a movie would be great. Well, there's a reason exactly. also why the movie never got made. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's that's me getting into the maybes again. Like what what could have been if this were a movie? And but but who knows? Maybe the story would have been wildly different and worse. It, like, <laughs> we don't know. Mm -hmm. There, There's I'll see one more nitpicky thing, uh, but it, I, I can put a positive <laughs> spin on it. The, there's something about the lightsabers and it really stuck out to me. Uh, in this episode, <laughs> just because Alex is pulling out the shade, the the That's way okay. the lightsabers that they're using in this series are different. Like they actually light up, they light the faces and everything, mm -hmm. and it just kind of hit me that, especially in those prequel scenes, I'm like, it just doesn't look like the prequels because they didn't have that back then. Yeah, there, but there was a few shots where the just the blue light of the lightsaber bouncing off of like Anakin's face in the Order 66 stuff. I was just like, that looks a little too harsh. I don't know, a little too blue. I yeah, know, it just looked a little, it little just too flashy. 
Yeah, it looks kind of weird. Yeah, Sorry. It, it just it just looked a little different. But I was immediately like, that's the exact same thing where people were like, I don't like the lightsabers in Star Wars Rebels. They're too thin. And it's like, that's... These ones are too blue. Yeah, I mean, I had that thought and I was like, <laughs> let that stuff go. Like, that's not worth... Those magical onset libraries yeah, are just yeah. horrible. Why are they using those that amazing technology that has a real lightsaber there? Uh huh. How dare <laughs> they Jerks. try to expand Innovate. and improve upon? Yeah. <laughs> and that's Star Wars. They they always you know go for it and they try new things. So it seems you fear change. <laughs> <laughs> I I can be resistant to it. I'm trying not to be. Uh, but let's get into some questions from chat. Like oh my god! I'm all to, the way up. I'm trying to scroll. <laughs> Thank you to up. everyone yeah. who's been sending in super chat questions. We absolutely will get to all of them. Yep. Real quick, this is the danger of being uh, downstairs. I'm going to run to the mini fridge. Oh. It's hot in here. I need another Coors Light. <laughs> oh, right, I'm still here. I'm gonna have to take my out. Yeah, isn't all this right. nice? We should do this <laughs> more often. Cool. <laughs> yeah, maybe this does need to be the summer series. <laughs> we've we've talked about streaming from down here uh a lot specifically i've been wanting to stream a video game from down here but it's just hard to set everything up in the middle of our living room well we tried from the ps5 and uh that wasn't having it the the wi-fi on the ps5 was struggling but yeah. the wi-fi on this laptop is handling it great although Streamyard is a lot less intensive than a video game right anyway j bell thank you for the first super chat does the show need another Vader Kenobi showdown, or are you satisfied with this as a resolution? By the way, I love how this gives more context to Vader boasting about being the master now in episode four. Ah, great. Yeah, we just uh, talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think I think we need another showdown. We, I mean, we barely even got... Mm -hmm. but the, the showdown that we got between Obi-Wan and Vader was in episode three. Right. And Obi-Wan was... He, he had just turned his lightsaber back on for the first time in 10 years. Uh, and he was terrified that whole time. So we need one more showdown of Obi-Wan as like coming into his true Obi-Wan self and could have been later. But I think in that, I would love it to be a verbal showdown. Same. Like yeah. I think we've, we've had the great showdown of lightsabers in episode three. We yeah. know where it winds up. We've had because that's because it seems like the the fight, the physical fight, is what Vader wants, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. to have a conversation and force Anakin to confront things is the fight that Obi Wan wants to have. And I think if you're going to have that bookend of the show with Obi Wan asserting his Obi Wan ness mm -hmm. at the end, it's got to be a more listen. Let me talk to you. Yeah, I've been saying that mm -hmm. since the beginning that I want them to just have a good old fashioned chit chat. And when they when we saw the scene today between Obi-Wan and, and Reva having to talk through the door, I was like, this is what I want with Obi-Wan and Vader. I would like them to be able to see each other. So something a little bit more personal, but something like that where they physically can't get to each other to you know, throw blows, but they just have to talk it out. I, I think we're going to get kind of a mixture. Um, a, I really loved all the times that Obi-Wan insisted, you know, you don't have to fight with weapons. And he kept on uh, finding different ways to combat the Empire. Um, I think, I definitely think sabers are going to clash in episode six. I think it'll be something like Return of the Jedi. Because if, fingers crossed, Obi-Wan tries to reach Anakin and fails, that's very much like Luke and Vader in Return of the Jedi, mm -hmm. where they fight a little bit, and then Luke's like, I'm trying not to fight you. I don't want to fight you. And Vader keeps attacking. Uh, or before that, he's like, it's too late for me. Right. So I, I think that we're going to get something similar to Return of the Jedi. And people have been pointing out how similar every part of obi-wan kenobi kind of goes through the saga mm -hmm. of episodes one through six and so if we're at return of the jedi and they need a parallel then that kind of duel where it's a little bit of fighting a little bit of chit chat a little bit of fighting a little chit chat mm -hmm. <laughs> we we might get something like that yeah 
do you think that at the end of this, Vader is going to believe that Obi Wan is dead? No. So he's going to spend the next ten years not concerned that Obi Wan's still out there somewhere. I guess I'm thinking of the A New Hope line of Tarkin saying, uh, "Surely he must be dead by now." He doesn't say, "I thought you told me he blew up," or <laughs> something. I thought you told me you stabbed him. Yeah, that Obi Wan's going to get stabbed in the stomach, right? And- Unless Tarkin never knows that this conversation, I mean, this this whole sure thing conflict happened, which could also, if it's just an inquisitorial bit of business, maybe never made it up to Tarkin. Yeah, mm. maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of think they're going to get separated at the end. And yeah. that's it. And, and It's an, a further emotional gulf between them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then going forward, Vader has a lot of other stuff to worry about with the Empire, the Death Star, and all that stuff to, to worry if, like, if Obi-Wan is still going to be causing trouble for him. He's probably just going to be like, eh. That I wonder if that conversation you know, where Obi-Wan is trying to appeal to him is where we'll see more flashbacks. If we do is going to be like, do you remember remember the good times? Do you remember when we were happy? Remember when we did all the stuff and the things? Yeah, (laughs) true. I do still hope we get a flashback of them from the actual clone wars and their armor. Just, I just just, think, yeah, I just want to see it. I just think armor would be neat. (laughs) I just think it's neat. Yeah. (laughs) It's such a funny thing that like they made that for the Clone Wars because cloth was too expensive to animate, and now everyone's like, "Bring back the armor!" Put him in the armor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Jay Seed. Thank you, Jay. Uh, okay, so where were they hiding that second ship? One little nitpick aside, that was awesome. What happens next? I mean, behind the first ship. Yeah. yeah, it was there the whole time. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> see it at first. You said you saw it. I didn't see it at first. I just like that when you go back and watch it, it's there. Yeah. It's just, you know, that's not where Vader's focus was, and therefore that's not where the audience's focus was. Mm-hmm. So I liked that. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> what happens next? Uh, I don't, that, I'm trying to reconcile... Reva knowing about Tatooine. And I guess right now I think that she thinks that Owen is part of the path. Maybe somewhat, maybe the Grand Inquisitor, the new, new Grand Inquisitor gets... You mean the old, new Grand Inquisitor? The old, new, (laughs) sure. Someone gets wind of something on Tatooine and maybe her last uh, thing to do to help whoever it is that's on Tatooine is to say like no one's there. Although they, they probably wouldn't believe her. Wouldn't they like, some, maybe to... follow her, like still be tracking her and see what she does. And if she makes her way to Tatooine, yeah. I'm just trying to think of how Reva could as her last ditch effort to like do something good, completely, shift their focus away from Tatooine and that could be a way for her to help I wonder if she's just like in a story set apart now like maybe they think that she is dead and then she goes to Tatooine and maybe maybe she is now looking to join the path and help the path or something I don't know but I'm okay if she goes to the homestead doesn't figure out who Luke is or any of that but all she heard was like the children Tatooine Owen mm-hmm. and so she knows Owen she knows Tatooine she knows about the path oh yeah she does know and she, Owen and she knows about Bale yeah, yeah. hmm so she could contact Bale is that a two way that's a two way communicator right well that one looked like it was a broken and b uh I mean, yeah, I assume it is a two-way, but th- that looked like a voicemail. A hollow mail left by Bale? Yeah. Hollow Bale. Voice Bale? <laughs> voice Bale. I'm going to keep going until you say we've got a winner. <laughs> I think voice Bale <laughs> is the closest to a solid pun that we need to go with. That. <laughs> leave me, the closest. Okay. Leave a, bo- a voice Bale at the but, uh-huh. but But could possibly Reva also have learned something from Tala? Because they have that 
exchange at the end where she accuses her, which we saw in the flashback mm -hmm. of betraying everything and betraying herself. And, you know, she's sitting you know, Tala saying that was never me. Yeah. And now after this conversation with Obi-Wan and her sitting there with, you know, another lightsaber hole in her gut, <laughs> that that's a moment for reflection mm -hmm. on what yeah. exactly that means. Maybe she goes to Tatooine to see the, the mod par parlor and she gets a robot tummy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's all the rage now. <laughs> she heard Finnick Shannon. Maybe she going. starts the mod parlor because this is like that. That's how it's all connected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what I was trying to say is I, I'm trying to reconcile, you know, Obi-Wan and Vader have to fight again. I don't think it will be on Tatooine. I hope it's not. Um, but wherever that is, it's like, how do you include that? And whatever Reva is going to do on Tatooine, like, are these stories still connected or are they going to start to branch off again? I don't know. I mean, if you if the rumors are correct and, and what people hope are, is correct, we'll get an hour and a half long finale. And that's, that's Wait, a are good those chunk. The rumors. I don't know. What? <laughs> are you just making so, rumors right instead now? Instead, we'll get 32 minutes. Say, <laughs> I, I saw someone else say. The rumor was hour and a half. Okay. But I don't look into rumors, so people could say that about anything. Okay. And I might believe <laughs> I'm just gullible like that. All right. I mean, if Stranger <laughs> Things can get seven and a half hours for a finale, that's true. come on. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what's kind of making me think, okay, they're taking these big dramatic finales a little more serious. Mm -hmm. and They've never gone longer than I thought they were going to be. They've always gone shorter for all of these yeah. Disney Plus shows. It's always been, well, yeah. I expect... 45 minutes or an hour but it's always well here's a 37 here's yeah. a 26 what's going on here why is this it was they've never gone long all those episodes were a lot longer yeah. than i expected and then the, we found out about, about the finale episodes i mean I like, hawkeye oh. had a pretty long finale so i'm, I'm hopeful that yeah. we still could get a long one or i mean where do you see a second season do you see a second season mm -hmm. still as a thing that do you want to see more? Not really. I mean, I that, that is the rumor. <laughs> and I mean, it, it depends on how, I guess this is like, let's jump back a year to when we were talking about Loki and <laughs> we were like, is this getting a second season? I don't know. And same with the bad batch. They didn't announce either of those until the end or near the end. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm like, you know, if it ends uh, or with Moon a really great episode or yeah, same with Moon Knight. If it ends with a really great episode and it leaves me wanting more than sure. But I guess the idea that, you know, they went into this with a story and it was going to be a movie and they could tell that story in two hours. And then they're like, nah, we can tell that story in six hours or four or however long this winds up being. It's like, OK, that's fine. I just don't want them to keep stretching the same story. If it's a spinoff or something, that's a different conversation. Right. Yeah. But I don't know how much I need big stories anymore. I mean, the other thing that I'm having to recalibrate in this sort of, it feels like post big screen franchise for Star Wars, like now it's a TV franchise. I'm fine with just a story that's just, let's hang out with Obi-Wan. Let's just see him day in the life. <laughs> it has a Zoom call with Qui-Gon. He fixes some coffee, just sort of chills out for a bit. Maybe talks to some Jawas. I'm yeah. fine with that. If we there's an anthology him. series of day in the lives, sure, I'll watch it. We, we see him get his, his like hut on Tatooine. Yeah, let's talk about the housing market on Tatooine. Yeah. We, we talked about him seeing the, the loan office uh -huh. and like trying to apply for a loan, going through that whole ordeal. I mean, I, I think he's going to have the the hut by the end of this series. He's I think he's going to move out of the cave. Maybe that's what Reba's doing on Tatooine. She's like, They're I feel bad. Up. I'm going to buy Obi-Wan a <laughs> Oh, maybe a she house. becomes a realtor. <laughs> maybe that's her new path. Reva Realty. <laughs> oh, no. Another person who didn't really change their name and went into hiding on Tatooine. You know, I, I'm i going to throw something out. We'll see what happens. I would love if Owen is the one who helps set him up in the proper mm. home that's not a cave. Yeah. Because, cool. you know, like they reach some sort of more pleasant detente that isn't so antagonistic at the end of whatever happens. 
and I hope there's some proper the Baru. Rocks. I know you're. I know that's you up there. Yeah, yeah. We stop just creeping around up there with. You, you, listen, if every once in a while, yes, you can send a toy. That's fine. He'll know who you are. <laughs> just don't be weird. Stop being <laughs> weird. I, oh, I do really like the shot at the end of uh, part five when Reva knows about Tatooine and Owen and all that. She has the lead. And then it's the exact same shot of the Lars homestead, but without Ben there watching over it, I just thought that was a nice touch. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to see it in its prime. Like everything's lit up nice. It looked mm -hmm. really yeah. nice. I, I said, said that. I was like, the Lars homestead has never looked better. <laughs> it looks cozy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd like I'd like if there was something for that Owen that wasn't just antagonistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that'd be nice like you know i know this place that's empty and that cave looks awful we... <laughs> yeah. this place has a bed stop punishing yourself yeah. everyone you you did some good uh -huh. now buy yourself a bed agreed treat yourself <laughs> uh well the next super chat here is from steven w fathery fathery thank you steven stay cool y'all i'm in austin texas i love austin uh, where it's 103 every day lately, and I would look like Anakin at the end of Revenge of the Sith if my AC broke down. Well, I hope it doesn't. <laughs> also, Stephen, as a resident of Austin, please go to Chewy's for me. Oh, Chewy's is great. Enjoy the queso. <laughs> mm, that sounds good. I do love. We we've only been to Austin like three times, two or three times, but it's great. Yeah, I would love to go back. But you're lucky you have a Chewy's in Atlanta. You can go to. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a couple. All right. Let's go to Chewy's. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm super jealous. Now I'm jealous of Steven and you two. You know what happens when you start talking about food on, during these streams. Yeah. Well, we're oh. in the kitchen. The kitchen's right there. We can just go. <laughs> no, but you can go get some of that queso and some of that cheesy jalapeno, the creamy jalapeno <laughs> dip. And mm. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Dr. Actually, Smart, oh. any any hot food, I'm I'm okay with skipping yeah. for now. I, but they do have cool drinks. I did get ice cream at the store today, yeah, so that's our dinner. I might just start eating ice, ice cream. cream. Fortunately, <laughs> you kept it upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a milkshake. Dr. Smarty Pants, thank you for the next super chat. After that Clone Wars era scene with Anakin and possibly more in the Ahsoka show, I definitely want more shows set during that part of the timeline. I do think we have the potential of seeing what we want to see as far as like Anakin in the Clone Wars armor. There's potential to see that in the Ahsoka show if we don't see it here. Mm -hmm. um, Obi-Wan, I don't know if we'll see him in, in those flashbacks if we get any in Ahsoka, but Anakin for sure. I guess I'm, I'm kind of guessing we're done with flashbacks and Obi-Wan just because I'm like, I don't know how long this last episode's going to be. Maybe it will be 90 minutes. That'd be great. But I, I, I want them done. to be. I think we'll get at least one more. I think I'm we're going to see, see the good times. I still think we're going to see that. Remember the good times, Anakin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see. It, it'll be really Force interesting. Nostalgia. It'll be really interesting to see what good times Vader does remember. And like has sharing a milkshake at Dexter's. Yeah, has has accessible <laughs> still in in his is in his mind because we know he obsesses about Padme still because of the comics. Yeah, so. comics and like Lords of the the comics and the books have shown him like constantly. Every time Anakin bubbles back to the surface, that's when Push Palpatine it comes and beats, <laughs> it, and back beats down. it back down. Yeah, that's why I think that if there's any way we're going to see Palpatine in the next one, it's going to be him doing that emotional beat yeah. down at the end. Yeah, I I think that makes sense. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> oh, I'll give you a knuckle sandwich. But I have so much already. <laughs> How do you think Palpatine gives someone a knuckled sandwich? Just like I don't think. He, yeah, I can't see him hitting anybody. <laughs> no, he's just like. Meh. Just kind of flops around with his hands. <laughs> I like the idea that he starts waving his cane. Yeah. Oh, he like Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're more alike than they think. If Yoda can do it, I can do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and Doctor Smarty Pants has the next super chat as well. Thank you. Also, what era would you want a Star Wars game set in? Hmm. What era? I for mean, a game to be set in. 
I feel like games are going to typically be in the past versus something brand new. I'd like uh, a modern game set in the Clone Wars era. And maybe follow, uh, you know, follow clone troopers in that era, but do missions that you've seen in the show. So sort of follow from the ground level and follow and, you know, further show that, you know, the, the individual personalities of clone troopers. And as you build sort of like a, what's just an average bad batch, uh, going around doing these missions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd I would fun. I would love to see overcooked, but <laughs> in Dex's diner. <laughs> I'd be all about that. I love it. You, like, you know that LucasArts would have done that 20 years ago if that was a thing in all the yeah. releases they were doing at that time. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, and Anakin and Obi-Wan and, you know, all the other characters from episode two can be playable characters. And they they have this like special mission where they have to go work at Dex's diner for a day. And yeah. <laughs> blend in or an ahsoka game think. set during the post revenge of the uh, sith era oh would yeah be I interesting could, i could see just for for the corporate synergy of it all well, like when the ahsoka series comes out survivor and fallen order take place during that time so i was kind of thinking ahsoka or something set after return of the jedi um but i think that's i think word on the street is the project ragtag which is being revived we think was going to take place around then. Um, and I mean, squadrons took place after return of the Jedi, but not much after. So I don't know. I'm trying to think of, would you like another pilot game? Would you like another flight sim? No, you it's like, we just would. got, I mean, yeah, obviously I would, but it's like, <laughs> I, I was just fed. What if it was Biggs the game? <laughs> if you followed Biggs in his time, mustache simulator yeah, and you, you just start like, you start off at the academy it's just a face on the screen and you have to groom it and keep it trimmed <laughs> yes yes you get to choose the size of the mustache at the start that's how you customize it mm -hmm. i th i think i'd go high republic i'm just yeah. trying to think of something we've never experienced before we know the old republic or the kotor remake is coming i would love so. high republic too just just the fact that you would have so many different characters to choose from playable characters uh, especially if you could kind of create your own character. Which are, which the, the Jedi are more customizable. Couldn't you actually do a customizable Jedi with like, you know, what yeah. crazy what, hills. What attunement to the force they have. Whatever color you want. Yeah, with a light whip like Vernestra has. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, light whip. You can choose your kind of specialty if you wanted to be a Jedi investigator or a healer. Singer. Or a counselor. Yeah, singer. A way seeker. And with, with the Nile and the drink gear being kind of the the evil forces during the time of the high republic that feels like it works better for a game scenario because there's a lot more of them compared to the sith there's just it could be a whole planet of drink gear and like Apparently the opportunity Niles. for a lot more surprises yeah exactly mm -hmm. other than where are we in relation to the battle of yavin during this yeah. game <laughs> where are we in relation to this how much do more of the battle of yavin do we need to see <laughs> Uh, we got Madman's Knowledge up next. Thank you. A fun, probably unintentional Easter egg I caught is in the Annie Obi Choose Your Destiny book set before Attack of the Clones. Anakin deals Obi-Wan's saber with the Force, and in the flashback fight, Obi does it to Annie. Hmm. I was Maybe that's not complete. I'm, I doubt whoever wrote that episode, Joby Harold uh, and someone else, I doubt they read that book, but... I did get the sense when Obi-Wan came in, the way he says, like, maybe I'll have a better chance this time. It's like they spar often and Obi-Wan doesn't win every single time. Like, But I he also learned have, from their prior match. Yeah, that they have a good rapport and maybe Anakin did that to him. And like, I feel like it, even if it's unintentional, it still works. Yeah. Uh. Trill, Jent, thank you for the next super chat. I think we're seeing Padawan Anakin because it needs to end with Vader as the learner. Yes. Uh, also, Anakin's saber was a metaphor for Reva and the flashbacks. Huh. Obi-Wan pulling Reva over to his side mm -hmm. instead of Anakin's. I can see that. And Vader did explicitly state that she he was using her as a tool 
yeah. in all of this. Yeah, and Obi Wan saying there are other ways to fight. Yeah, that's true. I like that. I think that's a good metaphor. <laughs> Again, I don't know if it was intentional, but that that would surprise me less than uh, a, a tie-in with the Choose Your Destiny book. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. You don't know what's in the packets they give yeah. people coming in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lanok, thank you for the next super chat. For Reva, I could see Obi Wan stopping Reva from attacking Luke, but instead of killing her or going full redemption, she just leaves the Force behind. D depends on whether or not she knows who Luke is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what would Reva be gaining by attacking Luke? Like going to Tatooine and attacking him. Does she want to get back on Vader's good side after what she did? Probably not. And is she going to kill a child? Right. That's I she she had the chance to do that with Leia, but Well, she got interrupted. Yeah. But would she, but would she I don't have? think she had it. I don't think she has it in her. I don't really kid. either. I mean the She's way I see too it, much trauma. She like I I don't really buy into you know Star Wars having power levels and stuff and obviously Reva fighting Vader it's like that's not going to end well but I don't see it because he's at a level nine thousand and she's only at eight thousand I just don't think that she is fully bought into the dark side she is using it she has gone dark side um, as a survival tool yes like <laughs> she isn't an Inquisitor because she wants to hunt jedi or because she believes in the empire she's an inquisitor so she can become the grand inquisitor so she can get close to vader so she can kill him that's that's her goal yeah. um so i don't think that she is just fully given into her rage the way that vader has that's why the empire doesn't work no one there really wants to be there except for maybe tarkin <laughs> oh tarkin <laughs> loves being there yeah tarkin yeah. loves it everybody else is like eh, man it pays the bills you know there's, yeah, you got your Frex. You, you got your occasional people who, who enjoy it. But... They yeah, think sure. they're doing good. Uh -huh. They think that the Order is doing good, but they don't want to know the truth. Yeah. Uh, how long do you think she's been the third sister? Good question. Like, I, I was wondering that earlier because when, let's say she was 12, 13. If when, even, she might have been like 10 or 11. Maybe. I mean, that makes that sense. Flashback. The same age as Leia and Luke. Yeah, uh, I think closer to 10. That, that makes sense. Good parallel. So that would so put her at 20. At point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you know, what, what is the training program? What is the what is the I program mean, for becoming? <laughs> I mean, is there is there a farm league of inquisitors before you move <laughs> up to getting assigned a number? And you got to be force sensitive and have a lot of anger issues <laughs> that are malleable by the empire <laughs> you know and what's you know how many have they brought in how many inquisitors ultimately it doesn't seem like that table had a lot of seats yeah, so well, i can't imagine from, there's a there's lot a, of people on the there's a huge wait list yeah <laughs> well, yeah we've <laughs> we've known of like 10 or 11 or 12 or something somewhere along but, those lines but not many of those being consistent at the same time right and None of them were that young. I mean, Trilla was young, but she was an adult when she was turned. Uh, and we're Rita, assuming that the Grand Inquisitor was the first Inquisitor. Maybe. I, yeah, we still don't know. <laughs> I, I feel like they're keeping... We're the first cool. recruited in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably true. Because he didn't seem like he needed to be turned. Right. I think he was in from the start. I also think... Uh, the tenth brother was ninth sister said she was tortured. Second sister was tortured. So I feel like m most of them were tortured, but some of them were like, "Sign me up." <laughs> right. and I think Reva was one of those. Mm -hmm. And we see so no evidence of the ninth sister in this. Mm -mm. In the five so years they, since, they they all have their own motivations still, though. Like you can tell that. The, the Powan Grand Inquisitor in this is kind of just like in it to boss people around. He's just got that attitude. I mean, I think he wants to become a Sith one day. Mm -hmm. He has aspirations to rise up the, the ladder. 
uh, he wants to take Vader's spot. Yeah. yeah, he wants he wants to read all the books. He wants all the knowledge. He wants yeah, that too. In, in the comics, first he wants uh, access to all of the books, <laughs> and then he doesn't even like them. Oh. <laughs> then he's like, "I'll write my own books." <laughs> uh, but let's go to Kins Schuler for the next super chat. Thank you. Uh, I know you didn't care for the effects on Vader ripping that ship apart. That part was okay for me. Uh, but my God, that is now my favorite Vader scene in all of Star Wars. And talk about seeing his emotion with no facial expressions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to assume that was Anakin in the, or Hayden uh, in the suit. We got another instance of, because I noticed it in the last episode, Vader shaking. Mm -hmm. that He was so angry, so mad, using so much of his power that his hand was shaking. And you don't see that very often, so... I love those little subtle details of his performance. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, the the ripping of the ship, pulling it apart, I thought was awesome. Was not expecting that. Yeah, it was that my only nitpick was I felt like it it took off and turned too fast for its size. Sure. <laughs> right. It's like that. That's my nitpick. <laughs> Alex is like, that's the not second how one. ships work. <laughs> the second one when it took off. I, I think both of them. I do like the sound if you hear the sound effect like yoinks when that second one just blasts off. <laughs> I imagine someone rolling down a window because you can do that on spaceships, right? <laughs> Roll them up. Being Roll them like, up. <laughs> sucker to, to, to Vader. Dark side sucks. <laughs> yeah, you suck. <laughs> Dummy. Nice try, idiot. <laughs> Did you just throw shade at me? <laughs> Madman's knowledge. Thank you for another super chat. Apparently, Kenobi has a bigger budget than Mando or Boba, but in my opinion, looks worse. I, that would surprise me if that's true. Uh, but I, I don't know. A lot of extra money to get you in back. <laughs> eh, maybe, maybe John Favreau's experience with using CGI in his films helped a lot. That's true. He does also come from like the Jungle Book. Maybe world his and helped develop maybe, it. Yeah, maybe he has like access to a different team, but I don't know. I don't know either. It's all through ILM, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the budget for each individual episode of each series is. I assume it's high, but... <laughs> it's very high. Yeah, but right. either way, it's not... And the kind of things they're doing are expensive regardless. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I hear these numbers, like, however, <laughs> however, million, however many millions of dollars per episode, and I'm like, okay, you could tell me... One million, you could tell me a hundred thousand million, and I'm like, sure, it, it, I don't know how it looks or should right. look. And that <laughs> entire budget <laughs> isn't going to just effects, yeah. <laughs> yeah you yeah. hit this point where it's like, yeah, it's 15 million an episode, or let's say 10 million an episode, just for math's sake, and then that'd be 60 million for the whole series. It's like that's still a lot. I think solo costs like 300 million, but like those numbers are so unfathomable to me. That <laughs> the the amount of people that are involved in a production like this, like I just hope that they're all getting paid enough. So be, <laughs> being able to to suss out like if this is a an adequate budget for a project like this or not, it's not it's not what I can it's not my wheelhouse. And, and, <laughs> and flight, I wonder flights from Canada aren't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I do wonder. I just brain farted. It fell out right out of my head. I don't know what I was wondering. You wonder. I wondered. Period. <laughs> something. I don't know. It might come back to me. Stay, stay curious. <laughs> oh, I wonder if it's kind of like Star Wars Rebels or the Clone Wars, where the first season of something might not get the same budget as... Like the Mandalorian season two looked better than the Mandalorian season one. And the, and the footage we saw from three looks even better. Yes. So that's a good point. So I don't know. Because this was a limited series, maybe they didn't throw as much budget. But I don't know. Madman's knowledge is saying that it did get more budget than the Mandalorian. And I have no idea. I'm just talking out of my ass right I, now. I, I hope that in the future, higher budgeted projects means that they can do more on location shooting like i i love that they have the volume to work from but i still think 
anything you can do on location is always going to look better. I mean, I know it's harder to do and more expensive, but that's and Andor. I thought the trailer for Andor looked awesome mm -hmm. and it was a lot of sets, a lot of location stuff. I don't know. You could just tell it looked more cinematic. Yeah. Um, and I think I, the volume's only going to get better, but I hope they preserve though the alien feel to those real locations. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of people talked about what was the planet they were on in episode two? Episode Dayu? three. Oh, Dayu. Mapuzo. Yeah, yeah. Mapuzo, the, 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 the SoCal planet, the right. Southern California <laughs> planet. That was the one that I looked at and went, that, that seems rather mundane. Like, there's something about, even when you saw Tatooine for the first time, it seemed exotic. Because that is, we generally don't live in complete deserts. Yeah. There's well, see, something about that that seemed a little too grounded for me as far as a Star Wars environment. I, I agree. Uh, I think part of that was because I had just been in SoCal. Uh, but also, when I was breaking down the Andor trailer, it kind of dawned on me. It's like, oh, you know, people in the UK might see those green hills and be like, they just shot that right over there. <laughs> That's mundane. But to me, I'm like, wow, <laughs> look at those right. green hills. So uh, people from the UK may have seen Mapuzo and they're like, wow, look at that interesting planet. So <laughs> or maybe it's the distraction of seeing things to distract. Like there weren't alien structures. There weren't like some alien shrubbery. It was so just location mm -hmm. that it doesn't. Like if you look at Tatooine or a moisture farm on Tatooine, you have those evaporators. You have things mm -hmm. that make it seem like an alien environment. Like stick some widgets, stick some things in there that make it look alien, and I'm fine. Yeah. Tint, yeah. tint the sky slightly different than good. We're good to go. I mean, you know, the one thing about the prequels that you can certainly say about George is everything he tried to take you to looked weird and different. Mm -hmm. Like I was just and thinking he... about the Order 66 montage. Mm hmm. And you see just how many different environments we saw in that montage, right? That seemed alien and weird. It's like, go, George. Try, you know, he tried to give us something yeah. different, for good or ill, and to varying degrees of success. But he tried to be different. And uh, it's like the special editions for the original trilogy, he was like, "What is what does Tatooine need more of? Rontos, <laughs> uh, just yeah, just more, just Rontos, just like <laughs> just big, more." More Rontos, basically, but more <laughs> big alien animal species and more ships and more people in the background. Weightlifting droids, it. just picking yeah. up random rods. To make it look, like you said earlier, Ken, more populated in the background. Just like there's a lot more happening. In None this. of it's a deal breaker for me. You know, seeing SoCal yeah. Star Wars was not a deal breaker. It's just like, oh, OK, I would have loved a little bit of plussing, but fine. I just wish, you know. Make it make sure it feels like Star Wars in that weird, wonderful way of some strange thing zipping by in the background, or even as a static creature. Mm -hmm. It's like that's weird. That's Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. same. Uh, but let's go on to Brett Baumler with the next super chat. Thank you, Brett. Lord Vader and Quizzy. <laughs> Quizzy. <laughs> I, I like that being dramatic <laughs> as hell, gaslighting Reva until the last possible moment. Quizzy was around the corner, laughing the whole time. Do you think I the, love his entrance? Uh, Fortress Inquisitorius has a Quiznos <laughs> in it. Uh huh. It's a, it's an Inquiznos, <laughs> but it's just a it's a place where the Inquisitor, the Grand Inquisitor, sits down and gives advice. Because Quiz, Quiznos, 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 Quiz always knows. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like one of those. What what's the thing from Big the that you can go to and ask it make a wish? Uh, oh the. Zoltar? Zoltar, yeah, Zoltar. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm picturing. <laughs> is like the Grand Inquisitor in a Zoltar glass case. Mm -hmm. I would like my head to be big. <laughs> uh, Bones McCoy, thank you for the next super chat and question. Badass Vader Starship Force Pull? <laughs> I think so. That was from that was from over an hour ago. So maybe they were just hoping we would talk about it, which we oh yeah kinda did we did. Yeah, I drew it. Yeah, I just like that as a as a question. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great moment. It was unexpected. I still kind of anything new with Vader. I expect something more like along the lines of the the Rogue One hallway scene where it's just him being big and scary and coming down a hallway. So anytime he gets to do anything really big and dramatic with the force, I'm like, 
Yeah. He's a big fan of hallways and tunnels. Mm-hmm. When it he comes really to is. Off. Star Wars in general loves loves a good hallway fight. They're really getting into the hallways lately. <laughs> <laughs> they did that one in Rogue One. They're like, everything, get a hallway in it. He did it in Mandalorian. We talked about this last week, but I feel like... Can we have uh, him storming Daredevil. down a hallway? <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel like Daredevil was the the one to set that trend. Where it's like, all right, every streaming show has got to have a badass hallway scene. Was that before or after... Uh, was it Inception that had the spinning hallway? After, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and I think Inception was after Old Boy, which has a badass hallway scene. Movies in general, yeah. Just we we got to go find hallways. the first hallway scene. Artie Matrix? Films, if Artie Films, <laughs> yeah, Matrix, is that a hallway? That's a lobby. No, Matrix has the 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 last scene is a hallway scene. Yeah, they were in the apartment. Where oh he yeah, stops yeah. All the yeah. Bullets. Eh, that's not like a a rampage. That's just a he literally is flexing. It is a <laughs> fight in a hallway, though. Yeah, yeah, because all the SWATs coming up, the whole the uh, police officers that keep changing into Smith are in that yeah. hallway. Coming no, up that's too. that's the the that's apartment the lobby. Mm-mm. What are we no, talking the about? End. The end of the Matrix. Yeah, we're in yeah, the they're, wrong. They're all coming he stops up. All the bullets. You're talking about two different scenes. <laughs> And we have changed. Fandom. Let's all watch the Matrix right now. Yeah, yeah everyone, yeah. wait. We have to watch all of the Matrix right now. <laughs> Figure wait, this out. Wait, was Phoebe there? <laughs> was Phoebe there? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, sorry about that, Queensland, Australia. <laughs> thank you for the next super chat. Uh, why were the Jedi leaving their lightsabers behind? Well, we don't know that they weren't the recovered. lightsabers of fallen Jedi. Yeah, that might have been bunch of dead jedi's lightsabers that was that was my guess i'm or surprised that... re- recovered some of them from the inquisitors i don't know because they, they i was kind of expecting of chekhov's lightsaber in that i was a little bit surprised that that final confrontation wasn't him like everyone take a lightsaber You're... <laughs> I thought we're gonna defend it i kind of wanted haja to get one that's true so there was a moment where when obi-wan gave haja his lightsaber and i was like oh he's really just going into this empty-handed but then you were like no he dug up anakin's lightsaber too so he's still got that one on him somewhere maybe we don't know that he took it with him i think he probably did that that was i would have loved if haja went oh i already took one from the box yeah Yeah, i got a box saber it's fine (laughs) yours looks a little rusty yeah this one's super cool sand in it (laughs) I do love Haja, and I was kind of hoping to get him, get to see him with a lightsaber. What if he was like, "What color is the blade?" Because I, I just really like yeah. green, and I'm, if it's I'm not keeping green, my out for purple. I don't want it. <laughs> uh, Valentine Weber, thank you for the next super chat. Last week, someone mentioned the parallels between the Kenobi episodes and the main saga. The prediction of the base being stormed was true. The rise of an old master part also came true with the Grand Inquisitor returning. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, we we kind of touched on this earlier. I kind of think that's why the next one will have a little bit of Return of the Jedi feel in it. But that's probably where it's gonna super divert, since mm-hmm. obviously Obi Wan can't uh, redeem Vader, and also the Ewoks are coming back. Please, <laughs> please bring them back. <laughs> I I think it's time. <laughs> I think it's time. That's it. No argument. I always think it's time. No for you it. <laughs> I was expecting some pushback, but everyone's on board. Okay. We, we got a resurgence of the of Life Day and all the weird stuff that happened in, in that holiday special. So until I see an Ewok. Ewok with a porg on its shoulder, like a pirate and a parrot, <laughs> and oh. a lightsaber somewhere in there too, then yes, that's what we need. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Joel Davis, thank you for the next super chat. I'm okay with Reva meeting Luke, redeeming, and then leaving. Even if it's never addressed, open story threads with potential are better than closed ones. I don't. Some. I guess it's just one of those like things I have to get used to. It's not the end of the world. Obviously, we know Luke is fine, <laughs> so we know we can trust Reva if that happens. What if Reva is the one that's like? Hey, there's this creepy old wizard guy named 
Ben, and he lives out beyond the Dune Sea. Keep an eye on him. <laughs> He's weird. And how does Luke meet her? Just just bumps on, into her in the, the market. Street. She's she's getting her license, so she's got to check out all the license. real yeah. estate around Tatooine. Oh, I hear I hear Hilo I'm... becoming more interested in what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked that we haven't had any animal uh, interruptions, but I guess we fed them dinner. We fed them dinner, and it's hot. It's hot. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're just they're, lying. They're down. over it. <laughs> <laughs> over it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. curious if we'll see Owen and Baru actually active in a defense oh, next yeah, episode. We I, I really hope, hope so. we get more Baru. Yeah, I'm glad we got the one Owen it. scene. And yeah, no Baru. Yes, so we've got far. no Baru. She wasn't even in the long shot, was she? She she came out of the uh, the homestead. I mean, you can't you don't nothing... cast and bring her back just for exactly. a long shot. Yeah, she needs to be yeah. there. That's that's your they made a Clone Wars model argument. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> There's a model. It exists. It's going to be yeah. in the Bad Batch. Just wait. <laughs> they hired a uh, proper actor. <laughs> and now on the on the opposite side of this argument with Miranda here. Thank you, Miranda here. I don't want Reva to learn about Luke and Leia's true importance and also live. Did they confirm earlier that Tala had the force? Uh, I don't think so. Jaw I, dropped for me, though I should have realized it in hindsight. What I saw some people... And I kind of thought this too, because when remember when I asked you if she was the one to shoot oh. the door, she puts her arm up, and you know she's kind of just—it looks like she's just motioning to Obi Wan to to not come any further. But she has the the blaster in her hand, and she shoots the door. But you can't really tell that it's her shooting the door. It just looks like she puts her hand up, and uh. then it it cuts to the door being shot. So, like, for a split second, I think some people may have thought that she was using the Force to do that with one of the blasts to shut the door. And then she says, may the Force be with you. So I can kind of understand getting that. I mean, I'm pretty sure she had the blaster, but I'm not positive about it. I think she did. Okay. It was, it just, it took me the second or third time watching it to to see what was actually happening. So just a weird bit of editing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And yeah, like right now, I uh, I agree that I don't want Reva to learn about the true importance. I'm I'm fine with her joining. Hilo is just out of screen, uh, being adorable, banning <laughs> him. I I don't want her to learn of their true importance, but we'll see how they do it. the The execution of like, if you had told me what happened today, that she even learned about like. If she heard the words children, oh, and Tatooine, and Bale is going to Tatooine. If you told me that happened, I'd be like, ooh, don't like that. Mm. But the way it happened today, I was like, all right. I'm interested. Because she had all, is it because she had already had the con confrontation and we'd learned about her character shift where she wasn't? No, just the way, I don't know, just the way it played out. It, it was interesting and intriguing and it wasn't over it wasn't like bale said we have to make sure that anakin skywalker's children stay hidden mm -hmm. like as long as they keep it a little like that a little but most of the episode she's going to be putting that ship back together to find a way off planet right <laughs> <laughs> well she might still have her shuttle vader brought his own i don't know why they would leave it yeah i don't think, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Then I'd really feel manipulated if they's like they left my shuttle. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> nice of them. <laughs> Speaking of Reva, thank you, uh, Peter. <laughs> oh, look at him. Yeah, it is hot, buddy. Poor guy. It it has cooled down here a little bit now that the sun's gone down, but he needs his own personal fan. Uh, thank you, Peter. K K K oh no. Karagaris <laughs> uh, for the next super chat. After this episode, Riva is going to need some serious recovery time before she does anything. Also, how weird was it to see Coruscant without lines and lines of traffic in the sky? <laughs> it was a light day. It was a Sunday. I, I did see some ships in the there, sky. There are ships in the sky. So I was like, it did look different, but... They were pretty high up in whatever... Yeah. Which yeah. tower do you think that training area is in? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I saw some people saying that, like, oh, they got the skyline wrong. But 
That place has a lot of windows. Yeah. We don't know which way they were looking out. Mm -mm. Maybe on, they were all over on the West Wing. It kind of looked like the one that the series started in, but that series, I think, showed the Senate and stuff out there. So it must have been a different tower. Now I kind of want to look at that training pic that we saw of Hayden pre-production wise mm. and see if it matches any of the pose in that fight. Cause we had heard what, that he just went and grabbed the Cape for the photo shoot to throw a Cape on for the photo. Uh, but I wonder if the choreography is actually from that flashback fight. Mm. Yeah. Could be. I don't know. Well, I think yeah, he just wanted to wear the Cape. That wouldn't surprise me. Cause he does. It sounds like Vader has a team of people creating vader so we have anakin and then there was like a movement double and a stunt double and of course right. james earl jones uh so i don't know if we do no guarantee he'd be sword fight vader in right those scenes. it could be like a bob anderson situation mm -hmm. it's like this guy's a better train to you know do it with 100 pounds of outfit <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of Vader dueling, wow, these are just flowing very well. Thank you, Alexander, for the next super chat. Uh, you could tell Vader was bored fighting Reva, begging for a challenge. Hopefully, Obi-Wan gives him some in the next episode. Agreed. I, I do think we're going to get one more fight. I feel like I got, I got the feeling that he was using the Force a lot to fight her because he was like, she isn't worth my time and skill to actually duel with a lightsaber. It was all just, yeah, toying with her. Yeah. I mean, how many times was there actual contact in that fight? I mean, he hits her saber a couple times, but it was just... <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of it was just no, 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 uh -huh. no, no. Force no. block, force block, yeah. force block, force block. <laughs> yeah. A lot of button mashing in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was in a quick time event. <laughs> <laughs> It's like now it does opposite. feel like fall in order. Yeah, it's the opposite of how I play video games, which is like <laughs> mash, do, mash, 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 mash. Nothing but attack, and he was doing nothing but blocking everything. Uh -huh. Of course, <laughs> which is impressive to be able to fight like most that. impressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most impressive. Miranda here. Thank you for the next super chat. Speaking of Ventress, could they adapt Dark Disciple and Son of Dathomir through future seasons of Tales of the Jedi? Too much of a reach, Red. Hmm. Well, I know that, uh, not Son of Death, I mean, Dark Disciple was going to be like six episodes long. So I, I don't, I, unless they did an entire season of Tales of the Jedi, because the, the first season is six episodes and it's two tales or two characters focused. But, I, I mean, would, they could. I would love to see that in some form of media, just because such a cool story and i know a lot of people love that story to death but yeah i would i wouldn't want them to do it if they couldn't do it so i want to say it couldn't do it right but feloni already has that story mapped out in his head so it would just be whether or not they could do it to his expectations of it and then it's like we've already got dark disciple the book so i don't Those know that, what, that katie lucas scripts yeah that could warrant its own little mini project. I'm like, I'm on board with it. It is a retread, but since both of those stories were meant to be for the Clone Wars, they were meant to be animated. I'm like, yeah, it would be give nice us, for them to be shown in their original intent. Give us Tales of the Clone Wars as a spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say Clone Wars is finished, but we're doing these little lost tales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or the I, like I, season six on Netflix was the lost missions. Yeah, I, I had that idea a while ago thinking that maybe this was back when Disney Plus was just kind of being rolled out. And I thought they could take all the unfinished arcs of the Clone Wars, finish them and release them as their own little mini series, which would be really cool. I don't know that they would it's do like, that. It, but. At what point is that just another season of the Clone Wars? though? <laughs> Well, they Which would is also fine. Not a bad thing. Yeah. Separately. It's yeah. just like we, we got the end of it, which was and it was such a good end. But also some of this feels like a felony long game. Like, how yeah. can I find a way <laughs> uh -huh. to get these stories out? 
I'm going to sneak Wars some of them tale. through Bad Batch. I'm going to sneak some of them through this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm not going to complain if they do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, my turn to get a refill. Okay. Uh, Hudsonizer, thanks for the next super chat. I like the poetry to the lightsaber duels. There's a huge thematic current that the lightsaber can be a distraction from the force. This is why Obi-Wan wins in the flashback and Vader wins in the hangar. I, I what I really liked about uh, Riva's fight with Vader was the the continuing idea. And I, I think I said this in my review. I do not remember if anyone ever specifically said this, if it was like in a Rebels Recon episode or something, or it might be a completely fan uh, made theory. But it's a good one that the spinning lightsabers are to level the playing field for the Inquisitors because it's not like they were the best of the best Jedi that were recruited, probably far from it. So they needed a little bit of extra help. And so they got these really fancy lightsabers that helped them combat Jedi uh, and that Reva was trying to use it and used every trick in the book, like single blade, double blade, spinning blade, and just none of it worked. Well, do you think also that the Inquisitors are are very good at training each other? Because if they're always uh, no. in, constantly at each other's throats and jockeying for position, you're really not going to want one of the other ones being better trained than you or up to your level. You would sort of spike it, you would think, to make sure, yeah, yeah you're okay, you're passable if Vader comes around, but you're not as good as me. I'm going to make sure I don't teach you my secret trick. Yeah, for sure. Like, no, no Inquisitor is going to teach another Inquisitor everything they know. Except for maybe there were two Inquisitors in the Darth Vader comics that were like genuine friends. And then Vader killed them because he didn't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no emotional connections. Yeah. I mean, they, they may have been more than friends. Uh, it was unclear. He took the wrong lesson from the Jedi when it came to emotional uh-huh. connections. <laughs> yeah. They were like, we're out of the Jedi. We can have relationships now. And Vader's like, no. <laughs> Stab. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, if I can't, no one can. <laughs> uh, Theral Unfiction, thank you for the next one. Lost and Found Lightsaber Box needs a video there. Uh, yeah, I haven't had time to like really examine the box yet. I bet someone on Reddit has, so I'll, I'll probably just look. Uh, I didn't immediately recognize any of the lightsabers, but I've only watched it twice, and I, like I said, I haven't really dove in yet. Well, there wasn't one that was in a cane, so there's nothing to upset Joseph <sighs> Grimshaw yeah. in this one. Poor Joseph. I hope he's okay. I sent him a text immediately after that episode last week. Just, <laughs> just checking in. Are you okay? No, I never will be again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill Rudd. The, oh, we got a we got Pippin. This is the dangers of doing this down this here. Is, this is the reason we got like three hours of sleep last night. Because this little butt munch. <laughs> but he's so cute. He just wants you to know who's in control. God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that he's just trying to say hello, but his claws are so sharp. And that's how I kept waking up, is just like, ah! <laughs> Love claws. Yep. <laughs> Bill Rudd, thank you for the next super chat. And I love the 1138. Uh, the weather and this episode are both so hot. <laughs> I'm watching this from my pool. <laughs> oh, lucky. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Vader pulling down the wrong transport is a great echo of Ray and Kylo doing the same in Tross. There's always another ship. There were a ton of references or, or just similar beats in this episode to other star Wars stories. I mean, I got kind of a rogue one feel with, uh, Ned and Tala. The whole setup was very similar to the battle of crate and Luke just buying the resistance time to escape. And Obi-Wan being like, all we have to do is hold out long enough for all of you to get away. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was just another, beat that they were trying to uh bring back up although come on preload the ship <laughs> that molly said that too and i i think they were all i mean at least get the kids the on kids the yeah i mean yeah. half the battle and, and get the, them 
the the kids and the dude on the stretcher like what's he gonna do get him on the ship <laughs> the, for, I, I do agree with that that they're like okay it's time to go everyone on the ship the doors are finally open it's like you all should have been on there yeah get leave, leave what you don't need out. yeah leave some people outside with their blasters to help defend but mm -hmm. The, but the have it ready to go. The children should. <laughs> Man, I was so worried for Corin's mom, Niche. I saw her in the battle, and she gets shot. That's. I was more scared for her than anyone. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, Horn. Couldn't, I couldn't pick her out of a crowd. I'm sorry. Well, I did a whole video. Oh, Stormtroopers. <laughs> There's only like three images of her. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe Corin was piloting the the second transport. Oh. This is his pilot origin story. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be nice when Reva's there in the next episode at the beginning and the pilot of that ship just kind of peeks out the wreckage. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it all good? Uh, J Bill. <laughs> is it safe to come out? <laughs> J Bill, thank you for another super chat. Much anger in him like his father. Was I any different when you taught me? So was Kenobi canonically a really pissed off little youngling? <laughs> I mean what kid isn't yeah teen angst we all had it some of us still have it i bet he wasn't angsty though i bet obi-wan was just like a smart ass like he was probably oh, yeah. sarcastic like he was probably really amped up the little sarcastic bits we get from him as an adult yeah because he's snarky with qui-gon as well mm -hmm. like maybe that was his dark side tendency is just snark <laughs> Is that a yeah. dark side? Is that his expression? He's <laughs> he's so sassy. He's full of sass. That's why him and Leia get along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, another little moment I loved is that when she goes into the crawl space or the vents or whatever, she pulls her gloves out. Yeah. To, to like, like get ready to do some work. And I was like, oh, they came in handy. Time to show Obi-Wan why I actually needed these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I needed these. Can I just point out that my my nitpick brain picked out the how did Lola open that vent? Oh yeah, it just kind of opens and closes <laughs> yes. for it. Like I guess it like I would love if there's a little it. arm that we could just see a little something that would have been it, it's a oh someone's at the door, I guess. Or oh no, it was the ice machine. Oh the ice machine went off. Okay, it's very upsetting. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> Uh, I, I assume I did have another nitpick from that scene. Oh, now that we're talking we're about doing nitpicks. nitpicks again, my last nitpick, I promise. Uh, Leia's ADR <laughs> in that scene was terrible. Like her, her lips were either moving or not moving, and if they were moving, they were not saying what having, we were hearing. <laughs> am I having deja vu right now? I feel like we've done this exact thing for another. That's show. called heat exha ex exhaustion. <laughs> That's uh, have we not done all this before? I, mean, I feel like we, like we got into like a little nitpick mode, and I feel like you nitpicked ADR. It was and, earlier today. No, 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 no. Like right I'm here. talking about it. No, Molly. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's never. Uh, it was another show. I don't know. I feel like this happened before for a completely different series, and you said something about ADR, and I was like, I never would have noticed that. Mm. I do. Anyway. Mom with Molly. I noticed doing enough audio editing. I noticed ADR. <laughs> a lot yeah Any, anytime you're from a a conversation shot and you're seeing behind an actor's head yeah. and it's clear that they're still talking or at mm -hmm. least their head's moving enough that you know something's happening but there's no audio irks me that yeah. empty cup acting anytime i see oh, empty, empty cup, yeah empty every cup. time you someone takes Just, a sip for, of coffee from yeah or picks up no weight to a suitcase or a box yeah it's mm -hmm. so annoying <laughs> <laughs> you really conveyed the weight there <laughs> That it was a full camp. <laughs> We're going insane. Uh, <laughs> James Clancy. It's about, it's about that time. Yeah. Thank you for the next super chat. Loved this. Finally got that flashback and the return of Haja. Favorite episode so far, but very dark. Darker even than Rots. Um, Darker I'm trying than... to decide if it was darker than Revenge of the Sith. I mean, I, mean, I think the series as a whole so far has been darker, yes, because we saw the tomb uh, of all the, but, the dead or frozen people. Not, not another youngling ago. flashback in this episode. Yeah, uh, yeah that was The rough. youngling flashbacks are, are pretty rough to see. I think I agree. 
the this ep, the this series hasn't had a lot of laughs in it and yeah star wars usually does uh i feel like the first time obi-wan and leia interacted good comedy there mm -hmm. uh, like that gloves moment haja is usually Love haja. a good source of comedy in these episodes maybe that's why i really really liked episode two and i think it might still be my favorite one and it, it might be because i really liked dayu i thought the interactions between Obi-Wan and Haja and Obi-Wan and Leia were all good. Uh, I liked the the weird creatures like the Velociraptor bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. Like it, it just checked a lot of boxes for me. Um, I did Haja really love how dark Reva got in this particular episode because. Uh, oh, we didn't even talk about Ned B. I, okay. I was thinking about like, okay, all the moments in this episode that made me emotional were uh, Ned B's sacrifice, which RIP, but also hearing Reva talk about uh, having to hide with the bodies. And feeling them going the, cold around feeling her. Feeling them going cold. I was like, that is super dark for Star Wars. Like, let alone, like, Besides the fact that it's a bunch of kids, that that's how she survived, and, and you know we see where she is now. Ugh, that was. And this story is not going to end on a big win. It's more going to end <laughs> on a sort of holding pattern. Yeah, I mean, Leia, Luke, and Leia are going to still be around, which is, I guess, the win. <laughs> I think the win is Obi Wan. Well, Ben becoming Obi Wan once more. Mm -hmm. But we said it. We've him. seen that. Then it goes to. I mean, whose story is this? Is it ultimately going to be? That's why I think maybe Reva is going to be the linchpin to who's real, who's had the arc in this. Like we, well, who's, I, I who has a surprising arc in this? We, we know Obi Wan becomes Obi Wan because we yeah. see Obi Wan in A New Hope. Mm -hmm. We know he gets who has the back. surprising arc. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I don't feel like he's fully there yet. I mean, he, he's made a lot of headway, obviously, from where he was in Episode One, but I still think we're going to get the moment of him fully i think he needs to like luke he needs to confront vader uh that's that's his big thing um but yeah i i think that reva is also going to she's the character that we don't know who's going to happen or what's going to happen to her mm -hmm. and she's the one who a lot of the tragedy in this episode that we've mentioned revolves around mm -hmm. you know in saying what she went through what what was there what what is going to be like what is an emotional redemption for her. What yeah. is an arc for that? You know, and, and her even stating, I think maybe is a thing that plays in the next one is she very clearly, you know, you, what about the, you wouldn't imagine, you don't wouldn't understand the things I've done alone or the, you yeah. know, the fact that, so maybe that is accepting doing something with someone or trusting someone. Like there's a lot of trust issues throughout this entire run so far that keep being brought up. You know, Obi-Wan isn't trusting anyone at the beginning of this. You know, Leia makes a big point of pointing out that you don't trust anyone, including me. You know, you're not being truthful. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is ultimately about trust, this story. I think, yeah, I definitely think that's a major running theme of the story. I still don't want to see a flashback of the next of Obi-Wan and Yoda walking past her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to, we're going to do one more question here ken and then we're gonna let you go because we still have quite a few and, uh, <laughs> well just know this is your choice i would be here to support you throughout but that's fine <laughs> i i appreciate that but uh vex 431 has the next one uh thank you vex i don't remember the limitations of the volume being so apparent in mando is it because those seasons came before the onslaught of other disney plus series I wonder if maybe they were a little more conservative with it in the first season. Could be. And it was so new. Like, I don't know. It, probably the fact that it was new. I bet I gave it more leeway. Yeah. Or and hyper awareness on the part of the viewer now that we're all looking for. Where's the volume in this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this must be the volume. I think a lot of shots, too, in, in Mando 
are a lot of those shots are just Mando or just Mando, Mando and Grogu and like what what they're getting up to and a lot of this stuff in Obi Wan is like who Obi Wan's interacting with. It's also not conducive to running. Yeah, that totally agree there. That <laughs> there's a lot of quick shots of we have to run these five feet and then cut and then we're running another five feet. Mm -hmm. Um. I wonder if like the Mandalorian was kind of maybe I'm wrong. I'm just kind of spitballing. Maybe the Mandalorian was made with the volume in mind and was kind of designed around it. And we have Kenobi, which was originally going to be a movie. And then they shifted in into a series. And then that series was also restructured. Not necessarily with the volume in mind. So or we're just seeing the limits of ambition. Production. Yeah. Like maybe this is like, okay, well, we did a lot of static shots and, and, you know, closed room shots and here's a town square shot in Mando, but let's see how ambitious we can be to try and pull off more cinematic things in this. And we're just saying, you know, the edges of you know, the bleeding edge of the innovation of, okay, well, maybe in season two of Obi-Wan or, you know, and, or we're going to see the next iteration. Like it gets a little bit better. It gets a little bit yeah. better. Or we, now we need a treadmill. We realize in running scenes, we're going to need a treadmill. They're going to have to run on something. The that, whole floor moves. Yeah. 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 You know, so I, I can, I appreciate that they're trying to push the boundaries and, you know, we're just being in some ways, maybe slightly hypercritical Yeah, because the magic is so mundane to us <laughs> that we're like, well, we want better. We expect better now immediately. Well, we've seen so many behind the scenes, like making of documentaries for the original trilogy now and the prequel. The prequel trilogy was like everyone's just standing on a blue stage. But with the original trilogy, it was like there was models of everything and just everything was a lot more intensive uh, with how much work they put into it. And now it's still a lot of work, but it's just... It doesn't feel like it because it's not tangible. It's on a screen. It is. Yeah. Like it, it's harder to quantify as a, as an outsider, which I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, same for prequels, I guess. Cause like that's a, that was a ton of work, but it was all CGI mm -hmm. and it was new. And, I mean, they CGI. made a bunch of models as well. That's true. The, the pod race miniatures stuff. Was and all. Not right. just pod race. Like they made a ton of miniatures, but. Yeah, but there was there's you know there's always been a discussion in special effects about at what point things transition from being into a we have this no amazing thing let's use it in everything to mm -hmm. at what point does it just become a tool in the toolbox and it's utilized when it's the best tool to use or utilized in the best possible fashion and I think the volume is that new wondrous toy that everyone's trying to figure out. What are its limitations? What, you know, what is it best used for? What is it not best used for? And we're just seeing the experimental iterations of everyone trying to figure out how best to use this thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of show like after that, show. <laughs> that, yeah, that shot in the Batman, which uh, I, I think I, <laughs> we heard this from Force Center. I didn't know this, but that one sunset shot from the Batman was something they originally shot on location they needed to redo it, but they couldn't get access to that location. So they redid it in the volume where it's like, yeah, that that did seem to be the best tool at the moment. Uh, again, I'm not fully sure if that is all accurate or not, but yeah, it's I, just... I like that. The idea that it's, you know, we don't need to use the volume for everything. And it, mm -hmm. I bet Andor is going to use the volume, but they're also doing a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, right. You know, it all ultimately when a production it comes down to what's the best use of the budget at any given time. And a lot of CG CGI stuff being used because people realize, Oh, the CGI is more expensive than just shooting on location or doing a miniature <laughs> surprisingly enough. Uh, so uh, I think we're just seeing the evolution of the volume in all of this. And we just have yeah. to be patient with it and see where it goes. The ultimate test of Star Wars fans <laughs> and is patience. We're all so patient. <laughs> we well, we're just going to be bombarded with so much material that it'll just roll <laughs> off our backs. We need a button to press and it can just pull up Obi-Wan from Attack of the Clones going, patience. Patience. That's, we need that. Yeah. Get a soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
But thank you for joining us, Ken. It's been two hours, and uh, we're going to get through the rest of these questions. But uh, Enjoy your next people, two hours. <laughs> where can people <laughs> find you and follow you online? Uh, at Ken Plume on Twitter uh, is probably the easiest place. And uh, patreon.com slash Ken Plume has a lot of updates. Uh, I just launched a new show called Force 5. For Star Wars fans who enjoy Star Wars action figures, it's uh, me and a guest, and we go through their top five favorite figures and what they mean to them. They share them, and we talk about them. I just had uh, Joseph Scrimshaw on the first episode and Ken Knapsack on the second, and the third episode just premiered with Norm Chan from Tested, and a lot of great guests planned, and hopefully uh, you two are coming on in the, uh, the near future when things are cooler. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're that and when COVID's <laughs> off, but uh, I think we're we're planning on it in July, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so right around my birthday, you'll be coming on. Uh, you'll be there for the unboxing when I just open up all of the figures. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun to sort of have that conversation with people and use sort of the things that mean a lot to them as touch points for discussing their Star Wars fandom. They can find all those episodes right now at youtube.com slash Ken Plume. So... In fact, there's a thing that I found in a box that I'll show. The Celebration 3 Talking Vader. <laughs> uh, which, unfortunately, the batteries do not work anymore. But, I mean, Celebration 3 would have been 2005, right? I, yeah, I think so. So this was released, speaking of Revenge of the Sith. and The one thing I could not find was my, uh, would have been very appropriate for this weekend, Father's Day set. <laughs> that they released. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> when I say that they released the Star Wars action figure Father's Day set, what do you think was in it? Uh, I'm going to go with Luke and Vader. It was a nice, lovely little Luke and Vader celebratory Father's Day set <laughs> that was released. So uh, that Star Wars figures have done everything. So <laughs> as I say goodbye to you, I'm going to leave you with my tunnel Yay. vision heart beast. <laughs> That need that deserves to be framed and uh -huh. put up there yeah, put... with all of your collections. No, no, I'm sending this to the two of you. It's going to be your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's going to be on your refrigerator for your summer series. Yes, <laughs> sitting yeah. in the background. Well, thank Save you both it. for having me on, and I look forward to more of these. And hopefully, uh, when you start doing, explain it to us again, because there's <laughs> no shortage of content. Yeah, yeah, there's not. Speaking of which, there's no shortage of super chats. So have fun. <laughs> Well, thank you, Ken. Thank you so much, Ken. Have a great night. Bye, everyone. You too. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna dive in to the next question here with Miranda here, uh, and every oh, and there's also links to uh, everything that Ken mentioned down in the description. So please go check Ken out. He's a great dude. Uh, always super fun to talk to. I'm gonna have to figure out how to narrow down Your my top favorite five Funko Pops. Or Grogu action figures. Anything. I mean, I have a lot more stuff now than just Grogu and Funko Pops. Like I've got, I've got my Dark Ray stuff now. <laughs> so I, I'll have to work on narrowing that stuff down. <laughs> well, Miranda here. Thank you for the next super chat. I think if the volume, I think of the volume as essentially a modern day matte painting. It's totally fine. I wasn't bothered. Cheers. That's a great way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Where Matt, again, it's just another tool in the toolbox. Matt painting was all over uh, the movies of like the 80s. And even before that, you got the, the matte painting of the hangar, the rebel hangar in Return of the Jedi. Yep. Where it's like, it's pretty obvious. Oh, well. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's still a it, good scene. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just fits for movies of of that time period you know it's got that kind of aesthetic to it yeah so I guess we don't need these anymore well yeah no one's <laughs> no, no one's, one's talking to us talking to us that's weird we usually do this on separate computers <laughs> do you want me to go another to another room and you can yell at me um but yeah uh, I, I feel like i was harsh on the volume stuff and some of the effects. So it's just, I don't know. It's, it, not, it's stuff that I noticed and I, it kind of like made me go, Hmm. So. It's not that we're harsh on it. It's just that we don't have a lot of other stuff to complain about and people want to know what we didn't like. Yeah. 
and yeah it's true like if you want to know something yeah that's the same thing about the mapuzo episode i was like i don't know if i have to say something it's the the fact that they're just in california yeah walking around with some bushes but it's funny though because like a lot of times people say what didn't you like and then we'll start talking about stuff and it's like oh well gosh you guys are being harsh <laughs> you wanted to know what we didn't like but it's super easy to please us i think yeah for, for maybe not you as much what me I'm, I'm easy to please no just in general i'm easy to please <laughs> hmm. how am i not <laughs> if you're gonna throw shade throw shade <laughs> I'm pretty accepting we, of just about everything. Our patrons saw it today on, on the reaction. The the episode ended and you were like, that was all right. Yeah. Didn't say it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. Well, A, we're going off three hours of sleep and I drove all night. I offered to drive. I know. Uh, but yeah, the my initial reaction was more critical and then when i watched it again which happens a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. then like all of the expectations go away and anything that took me out the first time like the effects and stuff it doesn't bug me as much yeah it's just a weird thing where i feel like i have to watch everything twice now you've got that content creator brain where it's uh, like you can't always enjoy the content the first time yeah because you're just, your brain is working over time. Yeah, kind of. I think that's accurate. It's it's really nice reviewing the TV shows, though. Because when you have content creator brain and you're watching a movie, it's, you don't get the the luxury of watching it again right away a second time. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Uh, Star Wars Immortal, what's up? And thank you for the next super chat. This may be too early for speculation. Do you think Obi-Wan season two will be about Mr. Ben Kenobi becoming a principal at Luke's high school? Oh, my God. Weird old Ben, that crazy old wizard. <laughs> It'll be like Breakfast Club. Yeah. You mess with the Bantha, you get the horns. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Uh, I, I, do, still... I wonder what Luke's education was like, actually. I mean, he knows how to farm moisture. That's pretty much it. That's all he needs to know, according to I still don't think we're going to get a season two of this show. It just feels like this whole thing was meant to be the the, the last stand of Obi-Wan and Vader before what we see happen in A New Hope. But I don't know. They, they could certainly surprise us with a second season to this. I just don't know if it's what I want. Which doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think continuation of the story makes more sense than Obi-Wan Kenobi season two. I, I can see if Reva survives and there there are rumors of a Reva spinoff. Like, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. It's still not... Rumors... Like, whatever it is, I'm like, that's not my first choice, but... Rumors whatever. of a season two, like... Like the finale was rumored to be an hour and a half long. Right. <laughs> which is just something I saw somewhere on the internet. So who knows if it's real. Uh, Iklib, Iklib brought. Uh, thank you for the super chat. I'm sorry for what I just did to your name. <laughs> I realized there still hasn't been any Qui-Gon. Now I'm worried he won't show up at all, which will be disappointing. Because going into the show, that was what I wanted to see the most. More Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon. I'm with you. I think it's going to happen still. The way that, you know, early on in episode one, Obi-Wan is calling out for guidance from his master. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Like, that, at the beginning of the series, Obi-Wan is unbalanced. He is not connected with the Force. He has been Kenobi. He's not Obi-Wan Kenobi. But when he comes back into his own he reconnects with the force and he finds that balance here comes Qui-Gon here comes Qui -Gon. here comes Qui-Gon yeah I uh, 
that's that is the one thing that I think I'll be disappointed for like maybe a day if we don't if we don't if we don't get Qui Gon just because we got the name drops in two two different two different episodes and I think that would be a good way to round out like you said Obi Wan becoming Obi Wan again but I don't know they got to fit a lot into this last episode if they're is not going to be a second season. Yeah. Uh, Miranda here. Thank you for another super chat. Uh, the lightsabers did that in Force Awakens too. Uh, yeah, just like emitting their own light. I would love prequel special editions that update the saber lights and add back in deleted scenes. Um, yeah. Like, I know that that's technology that the lightsabers have been using for some time now, but... It just going back to the prequel era, I was like, that doesn't look like the prequels again. Super nitpick. Didn't really affect my enjoyment of the story. Still loved the flashbacks. The lightsabers still look, <clears throat> excuse me. They still looked different in the sequel trilogy, though. Yeah, but granted, they they use them a lot more sparingly in the sequel trilogy. I think just the idea that it was a new trilogy I, I was ready for that, I guess, because, you know, the lightsabers look different in the prequels compared to the originals. So it's like, yeah, the technology is always going to evolve. And then all of a sudden I am hypocritically critical when the technology evolves. But then it looks different from what I'm used to in the prequels. Mm -hmm. Like that's just I'm whining about nothing important. <laughs> just trying to be rich, just trying to throw shade at myself. Oh, now the fan's too far away. It's too far. <laughs> it's wanna... like you look over at it. Hilo's just sleeping. Hilo very, is asleep. Very sweetly over what here. What a little angel. I wish I could show you guys what he looks like because he's so sweet. And sweet. <laughs> uh, Brett Baumler, thank you for the next super chat. Kid Corin Horn is in the background with his mother talking to Tala and Leia at one point. Stackpole tweeted about it. Historic meeting. I did see that tweet and I was very I happy told you about that, it. I told you that he tweeted about that. And I, I love seeing creators like Stackpole tweeting about a moment like that. It's nice that they still get excited about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, J-Bell, kind of thank you for the, the next super chat. Kind of. I mean, thank you, but... <laughs> uh, what was Alex's fan film about where he said he had experience with lightsabers? How long was it? What was the plot? There was no plot. Uh, I wouldn't even call it a fan film. It was like a... It was just friends goofing around. Uh, I guess you could call it a fan film, but... I think I can put... I'll, I'll post it in the chat. Uh, 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 uh. No. Why? You're on your third beer. Do you want to post that in the chat? It's publicly out there. It's not. Is it? Yeah. It's right. just dumb. Well, we don't have permission for the rest from the rest of the people in it to post it publicly. <laughs> it's... Okay. I'm, I'm just, just in case. Okay. It's there's nothing bad in it except that it's just cheesy as hell. Mm. Molly says no, guys. <laughs> no. Molly says no. Uh, it's like eight minutes long with bloopers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably like three or four minutes long, maybe. Also, uh, it's not good, like choreography wise. Uh, we went out and we got like wooden dowels to use as the lightsabers. And those are heavier than you think. And they worked well for like tracking and rotoscoping the lightsabers out. But the fight is so slow and it's so cheesy. It's bad. <laughs> but if you find it, enjoy it. That's that's the I think the fun part about talking about it is that we're not publicly posting it anywhere. So they have to find it. It's out there. You can find it. And it's really not that hard. <laughs> uh, Kasey, thank you for the next super chat. Uh, when was Vader first aware of Force ghosts? I wonder if he knew, or I wonder if he didn't know until he became one. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, yeah, because he wouldn't have been visited by any Force ghosts as Vader. Maybe. I don't think that's allowed when you're a Sith. I think it's up to the Force ghost. I guess. Hmm. I think they can appear to whoever they want. Like if uh, if Obi Wan wanted to show up at some point during the Empire Strikes Back just to annoy Vader, I think he could. That's not the Jedi way, though. No, I don't. I don't. I'm not saying he would. I'm saying he could. Yeah. Do you think all the same Jedi way, quote unquote, rules apply when you're dead and you're one with the Force? Like, do you have to abide by? All those rules. Can you get married as a force ghost? <laughs> I don't know that you'd want to. It's kind of one of those, like, maybe technically, but you, when you're one with the force, like, that's probably their version of heaven and mm -hmm. that they don't spend most of their time as ghosts. They spend most of their time, like, just as part of the cosmic force. So I don't think that they're concerned about getting married or anything. <laughs> that makes it sound like they're just getting high all the time. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just part of the force yeah. most of the time. What do you think the force is, though? What time you want me to be there? Mm. Dang, I'm going to be part of the force at that time. I have to go to Hoth and Ooh, talk to Luke. It's oh, cold man. there. Bummer. I don't know. <laughs> um, Brett Baumler, thank you for another super chat. There were so many Star Wars content creators as background actors in this episode. The That's odds true. of an Alex cameo in Rogue Squadron seems higher now. Mm. Mm. I'm not banking not. on that. <laughs> a, uh, we're not out there. We don't live in California. Yeah. That definitely helps to, to get get a leg up on, on being an extra in that stuff. Now, Marvel stuff, yeah, that's all, we, that's we all filmed to, here. We're we in the, able to do that. We're in the wrong line of work. Yeah. Uh, so I think Steel found out uh, the code name they were using for Kenobi and saw they were casting for extras, so he applied. Mm. And then I assume he sent it out to the other people in the area. So I, they all just applied and got in. It's it's so cool seeing that, too. Part of me is kind of like, oh, Steel isn't special anymore. Because... <laughs> When we saw him at Celebration, we were like, oh, my God, it's Steel Saunders, star of uh, the first episode of Obi-Wan. Because, you know, his character had a name and everything. No, it didn't. Well, to him, <laughs> a name he made up to him. It, he did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now that we know that there are other content creators as extras, it's like, oh, well. I mean, if I find out what the Rogue Squadron code name is and they are taking applications uh, I will forge an address in Anaheim. I will submit my name. That's... And if I get in, I will fly to Los Angeles to be in that movie for maybe a scene. Uh, Billy in the chat just said, Steele just released a video documenting his drive to the first day of set, <laughs> nice. which he did tell us about uh -huh. that he did that. So that is cool. And uh, yeah, good for <laughs> them. That's, that's Yeah, cool. oh, it's super cool. To just be a part of something like that, it's, I don't know how, how we would be able to do that because I know, uh, this Rex and around, what's his name? Michael. I, my, my worst habit is knowing everyone by their handles and not their real names. Well, I, I saw some of them tweeted about not being able to make any content mm. for like a year because of all the very intense mm. contracts and things like that. So we wouldn't be able to, to do that. <laughs> if the channel suddenly stops, you'll know that I'm playing Gavin Darklighter in Rogue Squadron. <laughs> I'll have to move to a different state, change my name, and then I'll, I'll still, able to, still be able to make content, but it'll be way less interesting. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe more interesting. <laughs> when we do a year's worth of Indiana Jones videos. <laughs> That's still Lucasfilm. Probably wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, Mr. Shu, thank you for the next super chat. Off topic, was Vader more of a villain in the Legends EU before we knew he was Anakin? Uh, Vader has always felt almost like an anti-hero, conflicted character in modern Star Wars than a villain. Before we knew he was Anakin? Didn't we always know that? I mean, we knew it in Empire, so that the only 
things that had come out at that point where I think some comics where he was a villain, uh, but, you know, like an old Marvel comic villain, kind of cheesy. Maybe before we knew about Anakin and like, like the his, character of Anakin. Okay. Like we knew his name, but didn't know who Anakin was so much. Yeah. And, okay. So maybe before the prequels is what they're asking. Sure. Um, I'm trying to remember back that far. Cause like most of the books that I read before uh, the prequels came out were set after return of the Jedi. So I don't really remember. I know the comics had Vader. I'm sure there were some books, but he had like shadows of the empire. That was before the prequels. And he was a villain in that splinter of the mind's eye. I don't know that I that... ever would have. Oh yeah. Yeah. Splinter. I forgot about that one. Uh, good call. I don't know that I would have ever called him an anti-hero though. They've definitely leaned on him in the past being, I guess, I don't even want to say conflicted, but just haunted, especially after we knew what happened with Padme and everything. But I don't know. There, there's nothing in my memory, at least, that makes me go, he was an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. I always thought that knowing Anakin's backstory made Vader a more intense villain. Definitely a more interesting villain, but like the fact that he he went from such a high high to such a low low, like as tr in terms of like good side and bad side of the force. I always think that just knowing his backstory as Anakin, I think that made Vader a more compelling villain. Mm. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, Miranda here, thank you for the next super chat. There are other ways of fighting. I did really love all of Obi-Wan's kind of callbacks to there are alternatives to fighting. You can't win. And he even says that too. We can't win. We can't win, yeah. But there are alternatives to fighting. Very important <laughs> to remember. Because that's that's all Anakin thinks about is the fight. How to win the fight. Yeah. Brett Baumler, thank you for another super chat. We're even knowing about Luke is fine with me, to be honest, especially if she's redeemed. It's not any weirder to me than Ahsoka and Ezra being alive during the OT. Yeah, honestly, I think you're right. I think it's going to be uh, something that I will just need to adjust. And that's that happens all the time in Star Wars <laughs> of just I thought. I thought that Obi-Wan Kenobi never left Tatooine in the new canon. I know he did in Legends, but I just figured he sat there on Tatooine for 20 years. He didn't. He left. Okay, I will adjust to that. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You have to be able to adjust as a fan, or else you don't, you'll never be able to enjoy new content. Yeah, I think people... I don't know. I, I think people just have their head cannons and can get so attached to them uh, that it, it can ruin their enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Which I, I understand that. Yeah, especially if there's an idea that you really liked, but and I definitely was someone, when they announced the series I was like, okay, but Obi-Wan better not leave Tatooine. But then once he did, and I knew why, I was like, alright, it's a pretty good reason. I guess Obi-Wan can leave Tatooine. It's a good reason. <laughs> but he better not do this other thing. Yeah, me Reba better not learn about Luke and Leia. Okay, well, she did? All well. right. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how they do it, if they do that. That's just, I mean, that should tell you that you shouldn't ever go on, go into the public and go on record and say anything along the lines of so-and-so should never do so-and-so. Like, don't ever do that, because you might be made to look like a fool yeah. at some point. I mean, I've, I've said that, and I don't mind occasionally looking like a fool. It happens often. If you find my Star Wars lightsaber fan film thingy, uh, I definitely look like a fool in that. If you find it. <laughs> if you find it. 
like it's hard it's not uh <laughs> brett Baumler, thank you for uh another one right in a row I hope Reva is redeemed and lives. She's the perfect character to explore a reformed dark sider with it, uh, reformed dark sider with instead of just killing them off. Mm. So agree. If if they're going to redeem her, which I'm on board with, do not kill her. Like we just did that with Trilla especially. Yeah. And, and she does have a lot of uh, similarities with Ben Solo as a as someone who I see as kind of being a dark side poser a bit. Uh not not fully committed they're conflicted i should say um they've still done terrible things but they can come back and so what does atonement look like we've seen redemption enough in star wars atonement please <laughs> let's go, let's go straight to the other argument from grady <laughs> edwards thank you i really hope reva dies i love slash hater character but there needs to be a consequence for her impulsiveness I mean, there's never been any consequence for some other characters' impulsiveness. Yeah. Is, is... She's no less deserving of redemption than uh, Ben Solo or Darth Vader. Mm -mm. Like, by far. Vader's, so, Vader's done way yeah, worse. That's way worse. Va Vader is the worst. <laughs> but I think, in my eyes, it, Palpatine is the only character that can never be redeemed in star wars i think that's how it's supposed to be yeah. like he's written he, he is the devil of star wars yeah, like... he, he's, he's written as the ultimate bad guy and that might be the reason why they don't want to do any canon material talking about palpatine before he was a sith just because like he is the ultimate villain like we saw that in the rise of skywalker they they finished the skywalker trilogy or the skywalker saga with him being the ultimate baddie mm -hmm. i mean they they did it in darth plagueis they showed him before he became a sith but he was still evil <laughs> like i remember and george lucas was talking about star wars underworld the original star wars show he was going to make and he was talking about doing kind of like a this is why palpatine is the way he is and mm. i i don't remember when all that was coming out but i remember hearing that and being like oh why i don't know i don't need to know i don't need palpatine to be relatable no to me he's just he is just no one should evil need, in star wars no one should need that i mean wanting it wanting to wanting to know more about him before he turned to the dark side that I understand. I don't know. I, I can't remember all the stuff that came out about that, what George Lucas was proposing, but I just remember being like, hmm, don't love that. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's like, we're definitely going over three hours. Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> we're going to. Was it Patrick Dubay? Down this, the, the last. However many super chats we have. Thank you, Patrick. Says uh, a little something to help pay for the AC. Well, they're coming tomorrow to thank hopefully you. fix it. Yeah, thank, thank, you, thank you, Patrick. Well, they're coming tomorrow to look at it. They we'll they see usually they fix it on the same day. Mm, we'll see. Have some hope, Molly. Air conditioners are built on hope. They are not. They're built on Freon. <laughs> ours is not. <laughs> ours ours gave up a long time ago, uh -huh. and it's just like held together with ours. It's, duct tape in a dream it sucks because it's given us problems in the past and we've been fully uh fully aware that we could you talk about this i'm gonna go to the bathroom okay <laughs> no one wants to hear me talk about our air conditioning well, problems fine. but here we are we are we're for, fully aware at one point that we were like we're gonna have to replace all of the air conditioning stuff in our house and that's going to suck because it's really expensive but then every time we had someone come out and look at it they were like oh it's just this little thing or this other little thing and we were like okay I guess that's it then and they would fix it temporarily and then stuff like this happens so I don't know we, we might have to bite the bullet and completely replace all of it 
But I don't know. The the three fans that we have in here are are working now that the sun has gone down. So yay for fans. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can, I'm doing like two different things on two different computers. Let's go. I'll look at just the live chat here. <laughs> Please, Molly, tell me more about your AC. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, the... The humidity in Georgia is also very bad. Probably not as bad as it was in Florida. But it's pretty bad here. Speaking of Florida, we got to ride the new Harry Potter ride at um, Wizarding World, which was really fun. That was the one of the ones that the Express Pass does not work on. So it was like there was no amount of extra... <clears throat> extra money that you could pay to get to the front of the line for that ride. <laughs> so we did have to wait in line for Hagrid's motorcycle adventure thing. That but ride was sick. It was so cool. That was it, like, really good. That and the Velocicoaster ride was really freaking cool. But <laughs> chances are, if you leave me alone, I'm going to start talking about whatever we did in our real lives versus Star That's Wars. <laughs> Velocicoaster was awesome. Uh, Hagrid's Magical Wild Ride or whatever. Magical Beast. Whatever that ride was, was amazing. Mm -hmm. But, hey, leave easy. Thank you for the next super chat. I'm desperate to see post-Episode 9 content. Who do you think would be a good antagonist for the after all the Sith have been defeated? That's a good question. I think if we go back to something along the lines of the nameless or the drink gear like we're seeing in the high republic right now like something that is dark side but not dark side people hmm. and possibly something that the jedi created themselves i like that yeah something alongside along the lines of the nameless not necessarily like eaters of the force and we feed on fear and stuff, but just a different kind of dark side user. Yeah. Yeah, not not so much a, a people or an organization, but like just like pure evil energy. Maybe even like <laughs> the you know what the dark uh, side elevated yeah. The dark side people that we're getting right now are not dark enough. I need pure dark energy in my life right now. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the danger, especially with moving forward, is that that power creep that you want to go bigger and badder. And that's like what Dragon Ball Z ran into is how mm -hmm. do we make the next villain even worse? Yeah. Um. So it, it's tough to balance that out. So I think just going in a completely different direction uh, dark side witches. I don't. I don't hate that. The, the Night Sisters would be fun. A couple of people have, have brought up Abeloth a few times, which nah. that that gets kind of weird. <laughs> but we could go back to you know. See, okay, that's Abeloth is kind of the end of power creep. Like that's or the result of power creep. Sure, that's how I feel about Abeloth, where I'm like, man, things sure are getting weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could get back to Mortis type stuff. Yeah, which Abeloth is uh, related to that. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Justin Marshall, thank you for the super chat. Uh, looks like they did get a question in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, will Reva get a second chance at a family? Is she redeemable? Will she join the path? Will she will will the path be a group that leaves lesser space for safety? So much to cover in quote one more episode. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Uh chance at a family. That's honestly, I think the path is her only chance at a family at this point. Yes. Not not her only chance, but the the likely the likely choice. Chance going forward i think now that we've 
seen her confront Vader. She could double down and go right back to the dark side, but chances are she'll decide she wants to help the path because a lot of times that they've they've already talked about the families and the children mm -hmm. that are intertwined with the path and needing help from the people involved in the path. So I think that would be the smartest choice to put her going forward. Yeah. And the show has very much been about, I mean, it's star Wars found family, but Obi-Wan talking about how he was taken from his family and found a new one in the Jedi. And uh, Leia was take, doesn't know her real parents, but was given a new family. They have talked about family a lot. And yeah, I think that the likely end result for her, for Reva, is to work with the path. I mean, we've been saying since she saw that Jedi symbol in that safe house, how upset she was that it was like, why not me? Why didn't I have that fate? And instead of doing what she's been doing, seeking revenge, causing fear, uh, hurting the galaxy, she could fight to make it better, like Tala said. Mm -hmm. So I think fighting to make it better would look a lot like helping the path and helping instead of what she almost did in this episode and having another Order 66 and marching into a, a building full of Force-sensitive kids, now she can go and help them and make sure that never happens to another kid like her again. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Speed, yeah. speed round. Diego Imanol, thank you for the next one. So Kenobi has killed more people than Riva on screen. Does this mean something to the story? Uh, <laughs> no, because I this this sounds bad, but I think stormtroopers are kind of, you know, they're faceless for a reason. Yeah. Yes, they are people, but <laughs> they aren't really treated that way in Star Wars. Yeah, that just. That's kind of like a, a product of the story, almost. And I'm sure if if it were possible to do this, they would write and direct Obi-Wan to be a character that, you know, never hurt anybody. It's kind of like Batman. Batman kills a lot of people. <laughs> no one wants to talk about it, but Batman does kill a lot of people. And I don't have to save you is the flimsiest excuse. Right. <laughs> he uh, blows up. I'm, and this is just Batman Begins. He blows up that ninja building. Kills countless ninjas. <laughs> it, it happens in every uh, fandom. It happens in every s story where there's like good guys and bad guys. The good guys inevitably end up killing a lot of people, but it never gets we never really see the consequences of it because it's not part of the broader strokes of the storytelling. I am thinking though, have we seen Reva kill anyone? She cuts off that lady's hand. So not cool, but uh, not she, cool. she didn't kill the grand inquisitor. I assume she had to have killed a certain amount of people to get to the point where she is but yeah we yeah. haven't we oh, haven't yeah. seen it i mean the way that she says you don't know what i can do alone it, that that didn't have like a happy i throw the wildest birthday parties by myself <laughs> like no she's done terrible things which yeah i mean that might be on purpose so that the audience can believe her redemption quicker yeah like, because yeah, because basically we found we just found out today that by Obi Wan where it was like you're hunting Vader you're not serving him so she's that was supposed to kind of shift everyone's attention to the fact that oh she's she wants revenge just like every every other dark sider I don't know like when when you redeem a uh, child murderer Anakin Skywalker it's like everything's out the window oh did she kill wade she killed oh wade. yeah oh, wade the most important character i still don't know why people uh have been 
so in love with Wade that I'm here for it. I love it. Because he's an expendable pilot. What if Wade walked in with the Grand Inquisitor? <laughs> Guess what? I wasn't really dead. <laughs> that was my brother, Jade. Jade, if only. <laughs> anyway, everyone keep up the Wade love. Uh, Grady Edwards, thank you for the next super chat. I don't think Solo is the best example for budget purposes because they reshot 90% of the movie. Uh, Ron Howard True. reshot everything after Lord and Miller got fired. I think that the budget I threw out way back when we were talking about that, I think I said it. No, <laughs> never mind. Was Phoebe, was Phoebe there? there? No. Uh, we keep saying that what? and like most people probably don't know what that's from. It's from Parks and Recreation. <laughs> uh, you know, I think you're right. I think it was actually 150 million. Um, still more than double the budget of uh, a 10 million per episode show. And I think it, they said it was 50. So what? 90 million would be Obi-Wan's budget if it were 15 million per episode. So almost double. Still a significant amount more mm -hmm. but i don't know i was just throwing out the idea that it can be 60 million it can be 300 million those numbers mean nothing to me i don't know where all that money goes where, where's molly go she disappeared water you disappeared from the camera I needed water but yeah i'm not gonna Brady, have time to cook the pasta right. salad that i wanted to make oh. so i'm already thinking of options from uber eats <laughs> Taco Bell. You could you could go cook right now, and I'll just shout questions at you. Oh. Never gonna watch you cook in the background. It's almost nine. Oh boy. I don't want to. Finn Hempstead. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the super chat. The Inquisnos has trivia called Quiznos every week. Yeah, Finn, mm -hmm. you're smart. That that was better than my joke. <laughs> <laughs> I like that more than mine. Quiznos trivia. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! I mean shoot. I didn't pull that up. Thank you, Finn. Man, people are still talking about hallway scenes way back here. This is all from over an hour yep. ago. All right. So we got to yeah. blast through okay. some of these. Evan Fetter, thank you for the next one. Do you guys think Reva might become a Jedi that assists with the path, or do you think that Reva will die in the next episode? I think she'll help with the path. Agreed. I think she'll be redeemed, and she's going to help going forward. I think worst case scenario, she helps with the path and dies and is redeemed. I hope she doesn't die. That's too similar to other stories. Mm -hmm. Keep her alive. Let's let's see atonement. Ice, thank you for the next one. Another great episode. I liked how Obi-Wan had Vader figured out. It really feels like he's coming back to who he was. Yes, loved the flashbacks with them training together. It made me really emotional, not going to lie. That's same. The first person I thought of was our good friend, uh, Andy Blanchard, who Aww, Andy. Uh, we only really get to see him and hang out with him at Star Wars Celebration or RTX and other cons like that. But uh, he was just so, so hoping last week that we would get some Clone Wars flashbacks because of the back to tank. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this week he was just over the moon. We're going to change that. We're going to make Andy Con. Andy Con. Yeah. Just like another that. reason to just to go visit Andy. Visit him. <laughs> uh, Mickey Veach, thanks for the next super chat. Which series is more obsessed with hallways, Daredevil or Star Wars? Well, Daredevil's I, only had three seasons, and I think three hallway scenes. I think Star Wars has way more hallway scenes. I think so. Although Daredevil technically got one in the Defenders team up thing as well, but yeah. I I go. I go Star Wars, but I still blame Daredevil for causing that trend. And mm -hmm. that first, the first season, what are you talking about? Do you not remember that first hallway scene from season one? That wasn't the original. I'm telling you, Matrix made hallway scenes cool in 99. That's not the same kind of thing. Now that Ken's not here and we can get that. We're talking about the final scene. We don't have to talk about we this. Don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I say Daredevil. Well, uh. At some point when we have free time, which is never, we'll record an After Dark <laughs> stream where we go into to detail over scenes that we 
think are the same but are actually different than <laughs> <in> other <laughs> fandoms. <laughs> American Wigwag, thank you for the next super chat. Do you think Quinlan saved Grogu during Order 66? Also, for season two, do you think Vader could use Obi Wan, Obi 2 to lure Obi Wan out of hiding? Uh, I think whatever happened to Grogu in Order 66, we might see it in Bad Batch. Uh, also, no one had to save him. He could have saved himself. I don't think anyone saved him. I think he was captured, taken to Mount Tantus, and then the Bad Batch saved him. That's my yeah. theory. I, I think so, too. He he was never saved. But honestly, it's something that I don't need answered. He just wasn't killed. I don't I don't need to know how he went from the Jedi Temple to wherever. Uh, I forget the name of that planet in the Mandalorian. He just did. And no, I don't think Quinlan had anything to do with it. For season two, is Vader going to use Obi-2 to lure Obi-Wan out of hiding? Is Obi-2 the reference to Ewan McGregor's uh, brother, I think? Who's a pilot? Who's a pilot? And yeah. that's his call sign. Maybe that'd be fun. That'd be fun if uh, there was a pilot played by Ewan's brother. The rest of his family is in Star Wars at this point, so yeah. why not? Why not his brother? That would be cool. Joel Davis, thank you for the super chat. Reva won't know the significance of the children. All she knows is that they are important to Obi Wan and Bail, not that they are Anakin's kids. I do agree. And so far, the way that it has been established, I like it. I personally hope it doesn't go a step further. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, Star Orange 36. I think I agree with this. I'm kind of upset Obi-Wan left Reva. He must have known she did not have a chance against Vader. This was Reva's best episode. Love her. Also, Haja plus Hondo team up. Yes, uh, both have a funny relationship with Obi. That would be very fun. I agree. The second time we watched the episode, I was like, Obi-Wan kind of leaves her high and dry. He says, we can defeat him together. And that's then, him giving her an out and she doesn't take it. She's too selfish. I do. We, I feel like we didn't see that full conversation or what was happening, but I do feel like it seemed like he was saying, let's fight him together. And then he was like, peace. I'm on this ship. Yeah. He's like, I am out of time. <laughs> I am at negative time right now to do what I've been trying to do this whole time. Uh, so, yeah, I agree with you there. I also agree this was Reva's best episode. I, I loved getting to see her full story. Uh, I was really glad to, just because I was confused in part three when Reva, there's like a close up of her kind of clutching her stomach. I did remember that, but it feels like such such a long time away that I was like, oh, yeah. It, it's like they're kind of talking about the Grand Inquisitor being stabbed, and then she touches her own abdomen, and I was like, what's that about? I don't know what that means. And now we know, and I was like, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I liked that callback. Now we know. Uh, oh, and Star Orange has the next one. Thank you. Do we still think Reva has a special Force ability? Nope. So... Her force ability is not a force ability. It's an ability that many children have, and it's the ability to withstand a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say, so the Grand Inquisitor says, like, we found you in the gutter, and your ability gave you station. He might, like, they might not have known she was a Jedi, but then Vader calls her youngling, so. I mean, they, they could be talking about the difference between actual younglings that they that got some training at the Jedi Temple versus just force sensitive people that they've been grooming from yeah. the very beginning. I mean youngling doesn't mean Jedi youngling. It just means child in Star mm -hmm. Wars. So I don't know. I'm like they they could have found her in the gutter, like in the streets of Coruscant, and they were like, oh she has force abilities. Let's train her as an Inquisitor, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's a little too late to learn that she has a crazy force ability, unless it's force healing, and we'll see that <laughs> soon. Yeah. Ice, thank you for the next super chat. I will say that I feel like they should have been using the training setting, like in Rebels. Uh, I mean, that session looked a little intense. Yeah, I don't know why they don't always use that. 
that's I, I totally agree. So in in Rebels they had like oh right yeah the it's like a less bright lightsaber. I agree. The way Anakin was going, uh, should have should have turned it on training mode. Mm -hmm. That's that's just one of those things where they probably created that function for the kids show. And Obi Wan Kenobi is not a kids show specifically, so they were like, we need we don't need to showcase the this particular uh, feature on a lightsaber. It'd be a waste of time. Yeah. It, also, they've only used it like one time in Star Wars Rebels, just to be like, look, it's a training mode, and then they never again. <laughs> Ice has the next super chat as well. Thank you, Ice. I like how they developed Reva's backstory. It feels unique for an Inquisitor, and I like how all this was to get to Vader. I'm not sold on her being redeemed. Kind of hope they don't. I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, like, I, I totally agree. This is a unique Inquisitor story. It's interesting, though, like, you know, most people watching the show have no idea what an Inquisitor is until they started watching it. But... For those of us that have read the comics and played the games, I'm like, yes, this feels fresh and I like it. It's funny to think back at the live podcast that we did at Celebration because I think it was Joseph who asked me about what I wanted to see with, with Reva. And I don't know, my, my first inclination for a lot of dark side character, new dark side characters is like, I want to see them be really dark and that's it. Probably just because, like, I'm not equipped to just think ahead of, like, what their entire story arc could be as a as a good person and then a bad person and then back to a good person. I just, like, hear about a dark side character and I'm like, yes, I'm excited to see what kind of e evil shenanigans they'll get up to. So originally I was like, I want Reva to be super dark and super evil just because we don't see that very often with female characters. You know, we don't, we don't see them be evil and stay evil. Like, I, I just want to see more of that. I don't know why. Just variety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that most, and Joseph probably said this or Ken, I think one of them, we've heard them say like, you know, Star Wars is about redemption and hope that you can be better. So, mm -hmm. It, <laughs> it does feel like the stories can get repetitive and that it's like, yeah, a lot of dark siders get redeemed or they find a little glimmer of hope at the end of their life. And it's like, I am ready for a dark side character to be redeemed and survive and figure out how to move forward from all the terrible things they've done instead of just fading away. I think maybe, uh, I'm hesitant to say this because I don't want to put myself into a weird category, but like, I think maybe as you grow older as a Star Wars fan, you probably start to think of like any character that pops up. How could they be redeemed? How does their story end up good? But maybe that's just like people being hopeful. Because, like, I haven't been a, a Star Wars fan for my entire life, and certainly not as long as people who were around to see the originals in the theater. But a lot of the older Star Wars fans that we know are always talking about redemption. How could they be redeemed? How could we see them go good again? And it's funny that some sometimes I'm like, no, I don't want to see them go good again. I want to see them, you know get the the wrath of their consequences yeah no i think that's fine like i don't want every character to be redeemed it just does seem to be the norm and it does seem to be uh one of the principles that star wars was built upon that you know you were bad yesterday but that doesn't mean you can't be good today but from a storytelling universe standpoint yeah i don't want every character to go through that i want variety in the storytelling so i don't i don't think that's bad <laughs> uh bit decay thank you for the next super chat 
Is Hayden in full Darth Vader makeup under the suit? That would be real method. Uh, uh, I don't no think way. so. No. The fur. I mean, the full Darth Vader makeup, as in like Mustafar lava uh, skin. No. No. There's no way. No way. Because like, first of why? all, first of all, it, just for the special effects makeup side of things, it would ruin the makeup putting all the armor and stuff on top of that. Yeah, it's just a waste of time for a bunch of people <laughs> just yeah. for someone to be method. Why don't we just literally burn your face if you want to go method? I'm not putting all that makeup on you. Sure. <laughs> Ice, thank you for another super chat. Hadra was a great surprise. Loved seeing him again. Me too. I great love surprise. I, I mean, I was expecting we would see him again. But I, I love his line about I'm not a babysitter, Ben. Like I was I was hopeful for a little more of him. I, I love him in episode two. Today he was just kind of there. Uh, he didn't get to do much except have some slight banter with Leia, but she was like up in the vent. He didn't even get to do it on screen. So uh the his appearance today was nice. I'm hopeful for more next week because I think he will still be around. Um, but yeah, more Haja. I'm down for it. And ha the Haja Hondo idea is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I do like that idea. Uh, Eric Schwarm, thank you for the next super chat. Thoughts on Vader's voice modulation so far? I like it. It sounds pretty like crisp and clear. His his enunciation is very on point. I haven't noticed anything different about it. It sounds like Vader to me. Um, I still don't know if they're using the Reese feature. I, it's it's credited in the credits, but I don't know if they're using it for Vader or something else. I assume it's Vader. I think they might just be using a mix of all of their resources. Yeah. Because if they're going to give Vader any lines of of any words that he's said in the past, in the previous films, then like I could see them wanting to take from that and just use that sound bite. But I don't know. It, it sounds a lot better to me than uh, Luke did in yeah, the book of Boba Fett. Because it, it, it sounds modulated. Yeah, it's it's, it's going a... through, but, but even that, I feel like it has more emotion and range up and down. I don't know, but the modulation I'm sure helps with that. Sure. Uh, D train. Thanks for the next super chat. Why didn't Vader finish off Reva? Hmm. Cause you had he, a good... he wants her to suffer. There are some people that Vader will just kill, but I think a lot of the times if, if he can, Vader is going to just inflict as much pain as he can at the time and then he he might want to just let them go especially in Reva's case because I think after she had that confrontation with Obi-Wan and then Vader sees her after the fact Vader has that opportunity to be like well you see you see how helpful Obi-Wan is in this fight he didn't he didn't want to help you he didn't have the drive to to do more he couldn't have saved you and i don't know like vader seems like the type to just fill people's heads with the fact that like the the dark side and the empire is all you have left i mean yeah i like what you said earlier about just it's a it's a dark side thing to do to it's a test mm -hmm. i stab you i leave you in the dirt if you're strong enough to survive, then maybe we bring you back. Um, I still, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to see how part six unfolds. I, I think that Vader and the Inquisitor left going, she's dead no matter what, goodbye. Uh, which in a universe where you can get cut in half and come back <laughs> years later, that seems like a foolish thing to do. So... Mm -hmm there's that part of me that I'm like, okay, why didn't anyone just make sure the job was done? But 
thematically for the story, I understand it. You know, Star Wars doesn't always follow perfect logic. It's a mythology. It's mm -hmm. not it's not about people making perfect decisions every time. It's about morals. <laughs> uh are you done yeah okay <laughs> i actually have to pee again okay <laughs> Party uh break. joel davis thank you for the next super chat another super chat uh the volume was probably needed more during covid that's true that is something we did not take into account earlier when we were discussing the volume but yeah you're absolutely right uh they even talked about that in the 2020 right yeah 2020 investor day they were like, you know, the volume has been a huge, huge help for production uh, with closed sets. And so, yeah, they want to make they want to tell this story and they want to tell it soon. Use the volume. So you you are correct. Uh, James Bertolo, thank you for the next super chat. You're both wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you, James. That's nice of you. Oop. Uh, oh, I know <laughs> the next one is from good old Ken Plume, our our guest from earlier, and he threatened to do this and he did it. Thank you, Ken. Assemble a world between worlds Jedi Council. Uh, he always asks for us to build a Jedi Council, and I don't even know what this means. What's a world between worlds Jedi Council? Is this like a, an anything goes Jedi Council? I feel like we've done this already, too. I don't know. Ken, I need clarification. But uh, I'll go Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, Yoda, Luke, Ahsoka, uh, Anakin Skywalker, but the good one before he went bad. Tara Sanube, Yarl Poof, Oppo Rancisis, he's fun. Uh, oh, I can go backwards too. Uh, Stellan Gios, Avar Chris, and Biggs Dark Lighter makes it in there. World Between Worlds. We'll, we'll pretend World Between Worlds is a multiverse. It's not. Uh, but that's that's how Biggs, they, they pulled a force sensitive Biggs in. Uh, Caleb Levermore Rich. Hey, Hilo, are you poking your head in? Thanks for the next super chat. I find it funny that so far the volume has only ever been used for the Disney Plus Star Wars shows plus Muppets Haunted Mansion. Uh, that's not quite true. Uh, they're using it in, or they, they used it in Thor 4. Uh, they're using it in Ant Man Quantumania, which I, I can't remember if they've started filming that yet or not. Uh, the Batman used it. So it's not just the Star Wars shows, but that's where the technology was developed. So, yeah. I guess they're getting first dibs. I had to give Hilo belly scratches. You can do that. On my way back. You give him all the scratches you want. I miss him. He's here now. He's here now, but <laughs> like, we've, we've been without Hilo for how many days? Oh, six days. Six days. Yeah, we were gone a while. Hmm. Uh, Ice, thank you for another super chat. Thank you. You're being very generous today. Uh, I like that Vader didn't even turn on his own saber when Reva attacked him. He just used half of hers. He was not, he was that not worried. I yeah. liked the fight between Vader and Reva and its progression. That whole scene was awesome. I loved that as well. And I was like, of course, because we saw him using the force so much to fight with, with Reva and it was like, he didn't think that she was worthy for a saber duel by him. Like, he was just going to use the yeah. force and wait until, you know, inevitably he would get a hold of her lightsaber and use that. Like, yeah, it's kind of like, it's almost like it's below him to fight with his own lightsaber to with an Inquisitor. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, I, I love the progression of just her getting more and more desperate. I kind of talked about this earlier, but single blade, double blade, spinny blade. Spinny the blade. only thing she didn't use was the helicopter blade. Oh. What a saved her. Dang it. We still haven't seen that. 
Oh, man. Would have saved you, Reva. Uh, D-Train, thank you for the next super chat. Hayden's acting much better. No yelling, just calm. Well, uh, going to my interview with Mike Chin, who wrote the book Brotherhood, I really love what he had to say about when Anakin lets emotion out, uh, when he lets his warmth out. And I felt like this episode or those those training sessions scenes uh, struck a good balance of like warmth and camaraderie with Obi-Wan, but still they aren't brothers yet. They're still the master and apprentice. He's mm -hmm. still learning. Um, they're close, but they're not that close kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, I, I thought that the training scenes were very good. And just I liked seeing them smiling together. It just looked like they were having fun filming that. Yeah. So Star Wars released a video today. I think it was just on Twitter, but it was like just a quick clip of Hayden and Ewan talking about coming back to the roles. And it was it was mostly just like very generic stuff that they were saying, but it's still nice to see them talk about it together and be like, yeah, this was really fun to come back and do again. <laughs> Uh, Zachary Sautier, thank you for the next super chat. If Vader did return to Tatooine to face Obi-Wan, what reason do you think Vader wouldn't return to Tatooine prior to a, no, a new hope? Love you guys. Thanks, Zachary. Thank you. Yeah, that's why I don't want him to go to Tatooine. Some of the comics have, I think, explicitly said he hasn't returned there since uh, what happened with the Tusken Raiders. Mm hmm and he says, like, oh, Obi-Wan, you were smart to hide Luke here when he finds out who Luke is. So, yeah, I don't want him to go to Tatooine. I want their fight to take place somewhere else. Mm -hmm. If it does take place on Tatooine, I will adjust. But <laughs> Maybe it takes place in space uh, right above, above Tatooine. Tatooine. And Vader's That's like, dang it, why didn't I check there? Cutting it close, yeah. It's I'm like so Han and Chewie stupid. looking for uh, the Falcon. I told you we should have double checked the Western Reaches. Yeah. <laughs> but so if he goes to Tatooine why would he not go back again I guess he would have to experience some sort of painful something or other that he's just like I hate this planet I'm never coming back here yeah I mean I think it would probably force him to think about his mother and Padme and just like everything that he's experienced there as Anakin, like, I think Vader is trying to suppress every thought and feeling he ever had as Anakin, other than the last few that fuels his anger, you know? Yeah. So if it, if it brings up any memories as Anakin and, you know, the trauma that he had dealing with the, his mother dying, that's probably enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rice Ronan, thanks for the super chat. I cut the Annie Obi scene together if you want a copy. Uh, thanks for the offer. I did that too. <laughs> nice. Uh, Sith Rodriguez, thank you for <laughs> next super chat. Very generous for a new AC. Thank you, Sith. We'll, we'll see what they say tomorrow. I appreciate that. Yeah, Although I'm kind of getting used to streaming from down here now, and this is going to spoil me rotten. Oh, it is? I don't know, my back's kind of hurting, not being able to lean back on anything. Yeah, we are kind of, like, hunched over. We'd have to... Eventually, we would just fold into the couch. And the, the camera would be... Well, they can't see you like that. <laughs> uh, Dale B., thank you for the next Super Chat. With how this series is portraying Obi-Wan, a broken man disconnected from the Force, does this give Luke Skywalker's actions more validity in the sequel regarding, regarding Ben Solo? Hmm. There's definitely a lot of parallels between the two. Yeah. Maybe, maybe too many, in my opinion. A broken man disconnected from the Force. I don't think Luke's actions need more validity in the sequel trilogy regarding Ben, but yeah, I mean, it, there's definitely parallels. It's similar stuff. You, you acquire enough trauma 
you're you're gonna want to cut yourself off from it. Yeah, I mean, just creating Darth Vader or Kylo Ren, uh, you you feel like a failure, mm -hmm. and it's gonna unbalance you. you it's gonna you feel you. responsible for it. Like Obi Wan, probably. Well, okay, so Obi Wan thought Anakin was dead this whole time. So now when he figures out that Anakin not only survived, but has now transitioned into the monster that is Vader, he feels responsible for it. So now he's like stepping up to the plate to try to do something about it. But it's taking a lot of convincing from other people. So it's, it's similar to Luke where he feels responsible for what for the turn of Ben Solo to Kylo Ren, so he's like, "I'm I'm out." Yeah. But I don't know. Is it worse that he knows that that happened and is still happening, and still cuts himself off from it, as it, whereas like Obi Wan thought Anakin was dead. Yeah, that's what I was gonna go into. Like, Obi-Wan obviously still felt responsible, still felt an immense amount of failure, and I think that's how it's different, where I don't think he was actively cutting himself off from the Force the way Luke was. I don't think Obi-Wan believed, you know what? The galaxy is better off without the Jedi. I think instead he was just like, we lost, so we're done, and I'm sad. <laughs> like, that's that's why he is out of balance. Pippin is now throwing things on the floor. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that he was just sad and depressed mm -hmm. and unbalanced. Luke was actively like, the Jedi should be done. The Jedi make everything worse. So I'm going to cut myself off from the Force mm -hmm. and stay on this island and die. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they are kind of similar setups. So, I, I don't know, like, the point of The Last Jedi is that Luke is wrong. Right. Like, <laughs> he, he, yeah, he was wrong to... <clears throat> and he me. says as much. Yeah, he's wrong to give up, cut himself off, all, all that stuff. And he realizes that, and that's why he sacrifices himself to try to make things right. Yeah. Um, Bakey, thanks for the next super chat. So just how hot is it <laughs> uh, outside? Well, now it's, last it's I, finally cooling off. Yeah, last I checked inside the house, it was 82 degrees, okay. according to our thermostat. It's 88 outside. It that's, was. That's just down here, though. That's I see Pippin back there just like looking for something to oh, and knock the, down. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was our, 101 degrees outside today. Our house has two AC units, one for the bottom floor and one for the top. The top floor is the one that like does not work at all. So we just can't go upstairs up there. It's probably like 95 degrees. Yep. It was 91 when we came home last night at midnight. Blech. So it had been cooling off for a while and it was still that hot. <laughs> Evangelium, thank you for the next super chat. Do you think Vader has found Starkiller yet? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think uh, any of that's going to happen. I don't think Vader is going to have a secret apprentice. I think the Inquisitors have kind of replaced that. Inquisitors were in Legends, but they weren't quite the same way that they are in canon. Yeah, I. Uh it's possible like like anything is possible for them to bring back to canon but as of right now i don't think star killer has a place in canon storytelling the same as what we got before yeah. in the game it could be different i i don't see secret apprentice star killer being a thing but if galen merrick the eighth but no eighth brother exists we've already <laughs> Galen Merrick as an Inquisitor, I think is possible because they did consider that. So 
but for Star Wars Rebels. So mm-hmm. maybe, but I, I don't think he needs to be, quote, found the way he was found in Legends. And we got one more super chat here. Another one from Diego Imanol. Thanks, Diego. Have you checked with Tika to make sure he hasn't stolen parts from your AC? <laughs> no, we haven't. Uh, that, Tika. Little, that little scamp. <laughs> What a little scam. I mean, he hasn't come around trying to sell us the, the parts that he's We're waiting. stolen. So if he has, maybe tomorrow, that's who will show up. Yeah, if a Jawa comes out of our out of the AC repair truck tomorrow, we'll know. And we'll I will know. demand that they clean our parts first. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. We made it to the end. Another over three hour stream. <laughs> Just barely. We, we we did this one quicker than I thought we would. And it, you know, it, it doesn't feel as hot as it did when we first started, which yeah, is it, a blessing. It's definitely cooled off, but we do have three fans uh, blowing on us Blasting at all us. times. But thank you all for uh, hanging out with us and for your questions and your super chats. Uh I don't know if we're doing a Lego stream tomorrow or not uh, because we don't really have the space for it down here. And if it's 90 degrees upstairs, uh, I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it'll depend on whether or not we get it fixed tomorrow. Yeah, so um, we'll see. They're, they're supposed to come at 10 a.m. and hopefully they fix it. And if, if by 6 p.m. Uh, things have cooled off, then uh, we'll we'll do a Lego stream. Yeah. But if not, we'll see you again next week. And speaking of next week, thank you, JC, for one more Super Chat. Next week for four hours. That wouldn't surprise me. It's the <laughs> finale. And if it is an hour and a half long, then we'll probably have a whole lot to talk about. Mm. But Indeed. <laughs> thank you all again. Thank you again to Ken Plume for joining us uh, for the first two hours. Uh, make sure you go follow him. Check out his podcasts because they're super fun. And may the force be with you.